All right, this has happened. Taylor Swift has scaled back her private jet fleet, and she sold the Dassault Falcon <laughs> 900 that she acquired in 2009 amid some flight tracking drama. Yeah. As per the FAA records, the billionaire star musician parted ways with the smaller Dassault Falcon 900 last month, leaving her with only one private jet. How do you live like that? I don't know how, how do you she live? How can she do yeah. it? Preston, you have kids. Yeah, you know. I it, mean, and when they're always borrowing your jet, it's yeah. like, God damn it. So, so she, wait, did she get rid of it because of the tracking situation? Well, there's a couple of things. So uh, the Dassault Falcon 7X she held on to, a brand new, by the way, Dassault 900 uh, costs a uh, uh, just a meager forty four million dollars. Yeah, it's a steal. Uh, the Dassault nine hundred, big enough for twelve passengers, was Swift's go to ride until its last flight on January thirtieth. Meanwhile, her Dassault seven X, which has room for sixteen, is still up and running. <laughs> oh well, that's good. a piece of yeah. crap. <laughs> so it might be up to your butt. Yeah. Uh, although the exact motives behind selling the Dassault nine hundred are unclear, uh, her move coincides with growing public awareness of carbon footprint associated with private jet travel, particularly celebrities, and the situation. Surrounding the jet usage recently. So, Shatter, real quick. All right, I'll make. He's considered legal action against a Florida student who tracked her flights using publicity, uh, publicly available data, and then would post it on social media. Uh, her attorneys allege that Jack Sweeney, who runs the Celebrity Jets Instagram account and the now inactive Taylor Swift Jets account, <laughs> is engaging in behavior they consider stalking and harassing. Yeah, it's funny how she just and this not she because she's always been on the radar, but this particular thing her private jets is a, for some reason or another entered into like it's does anybody follow uh, s head steve no. on on instagram no nope. he's a pretty funny follow he uh, or they or or whatever but even even that uh, uh the her private jetness i'll just call it so you're saying and, that and, the, the fact that, that she has and uses private jets seems to be enormously more prominent than others yeah yeah it's entered into my algorithm and well, i'm this, like okay why do people care about this the guy who's do, who's actually as you pointed out Preston, he was using legally accessible yeah. information yeah. publicly yeah. available the one yeah. thing that works i think in her favor is that she's had a a, a history of, of, of aggressive stalkers Okay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so he. I mean, you could pretty much track any yeah. aircraft. You know, that you, if you get their tail number, you can figure out where they are. I have so. a, an Apple Air tag in your car, Kev. Yeah, <laughs> I, 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 I follow you, you all over yeah. the place at all times. Yeah. Didn't you borrow that from John Cry? <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. He said, yeah. So, I, I use the old charity scam. <laughs> This guy uses, man. <laughs> uses that info to track uh, private planes owned by billionaires, politicians, and other well-known personalities, and he posts their takeoff and landing times along with estimates of their carbon emissions. So that's what he does. I don't know if that's why she got rid of this, right, okay. this plane or not, but All it right. does. How many jets do you need, though, though honestly? You know, really. Now, do you have the story about her sitting with uh, Donna Kelsey in the suite for uh, the Super Bowl? That's already happened. Oh, upcoming? Yeah. yeah they, were, uh, they were making out. No, no, I was just wondering. I saw a headline. It was like, she's not sitting in the suite with Donna Kelsey. I was like, oh my God, why? Oh, I, I didn't know. I I'm just, you're the reporter. I'm just asking you if you have the information. No, don't I don't. Me. Because I don't I don't report on erroneous information. Ooh, yeah, 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 yeah. Well, Sorry. we need to. Preston, need to. <laughs> you got to give Kathy. She does straight up news. She's not I know. familiar with entertainment news. Right, right. right. Can we go with our correspondent, Kathy, on the streets? Can you let us know what you've learned? What Kathy is, is a hard news investigator. <laughs> Yeah, I, I'm not reporting yeah, yeah, yeah. this frou frou stuff. What are you I'm talking sorry. about? No, I said, I, Casey, I already said I read the headline. I didn't read the story. I was wondering if Preston had the story because I was wondering uh, why they're supposedly not sitting together. Well, right. here, here, Nick found the headline. Uh, scroll back up, Nick. Yeah. Uh, Donna Kelsey doesn't think that she'll be in a Super Bowl suite with Taylor Swift. Here's why. Okay, great. Well, Nick. of course she will be, and it's a crock, it's a crock of crap. <laughs> uh, let me see. Yeah, here. she's down with Gus. Yeah. Uh, here, here's the answer that uh, Mrs. Kelsey gives. Oh, she says, not this time. No, I really don't think so. I think I'll be down in the stands and loving it in the stadium with everyone else. So it's her. Yeah. It's Donna Ta wants to Did go. you back off of Taylor already, <laughs> yeah. Kathy? I, I <laughs> Mercer was telling me that uh, Donna Kelsey sat with the commissioner last year, Roger Goodell. So oh, okay. she's... Uh, pretty. Uh, she wants to be able to tear off her shirt and start uh, doing <laughs> yeah. cake yeah, stands. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you guys saw that uh, our boy Jason was hanging with um, with uh, Burt Kreischer and Tom Segura. In, Did not see that. Yeah. No. In what? In Las Vegas. Oh yeah. Playing blackjack together at the high rollers table. Okay. Mm hmm. Nice. Text them. See how it was. Yeah. Would you? <laughs> Jason. I, I already texted Burt, the one who <laughs> gets right, back okay. to me. Oh, okay. <laughs> he didn't get back to me. <laughs> That's where we stand. Even the people who get back to us don't get back to us. Yeah. All right. Moving on, Jennifer.
Jennifer Garner honored her 13 going on 30 co-star Mark Ruffalo at his Hollywood Walk of Fame ceremony on Thursday. I'd like to apologize <laughs> to Jennifer Garner yeah. and her pool boy, Ben Affleck, for incorporating them into my fantasy life. Uh, I the- apologize <laughs> to anyone who's been offended by my fictional creations, Chris Agon, uh-huh. the philosopher of evil, and, and the, the skull, skull sealer. sealer. Yeah, they were all there in attendance. Mm-hmm. So the Avengers like actually... see the skull sealer here today. Uh, can be seen covering his face with his hands in a photo taken during the event while Garner is at the podium and she said to work with you Mark is to love you I don't care what anyone says you allow yourself to be fully known by your colleagues by the audience by the world uh, she also congratulating him or congratulated him on being nominated for best supporting actor uh, at the Oscars saying your work on poor things deserves all of the awards all of them but the real success is how you thrilled and delighted your colleagues, how they are thrilled and delighted to have the opportunity to lift you up and celebrate you. Hey, well, that that uh, that rom com that he did with uh, Jennifer Garner and Chris Agon, the Skull Sealer. Well, yep. the, yeah, it's one of the, the classics. Oh, right? thirteen going on 13 thirty. Going yeah, 30. it's yeah, a yeah. sweet movie. I love that movie. All right, Martha Stewart. She works hard to maintain her youthful glow, and she is not afraid to share details about the cosmetic procedures that she has undergone. Well, whatever she said, it, it's pretty good because yeah. she doesn't have that uh, feline face. Yeah, here's the deal. She she does it in moderation. So, and she talks about it specifically on her podcast. She's eighty two years old, and she sat down with her dermatologist, Doctor Dan. And Belkin uh, to share tips on looking your best as you get older. And she said, I don't think a lot about age, but I don't want to look my age at all. And that's why I work really hard on it. In addition to exercise and a healthy diet, the lifestyle guru said she's a fan of cosmetic procedures to help her look her best. So the doctor revealed that uh, he's placed, quote, a little Botox on Stuart's upper face, but admitted that it didn't work as well as they had expected. He said, uh, or she said, oh, I don't like it at all. My eyebrows kind of go up in a V and that looks so unnatural because I don't have lines in my forehead. Something's wrong. <laughs> How's that, Martha? Something's wrong. Something's very wrong. You okay? I don't feel right. <laughs> Dude, that sounds horrible. <laughs> I'm scared. Wow. Oh, it's too much. Belgin said, I've tried to give you a little lift. It hasn't really worked that well on, <laughs> on the upper face. <laughs> But I think uh, neuromodulators like Botox have worked really well for you on the lower face. Uh, People use quite often, obviously, it's one of the most liberally administered uh, Botox. But I've also, you know, it can migrate in someone's face. Mm -hmm. It can, and they they warn you of this. Uh, It can, you know. Listen, there are definitely side effects to it. But I mean, it is, you know, you talk to anybody who administers it, they're like, we give it to kids, you know, babies. I'm like, oh. Mommy, I don't feel so good. Yeah. (laughs) So uh, he, she said, or the doctor said, we don't do it that often. And for you, I like to use fillers that are what we call biostimulatory fillers. Uh. So those are meant to increase collagen production, whereas uh, hyaluronic, I'm, I'm going to mess up. Hyaluronic. Abel Agoria taught me that. Yeah, hyaluronic acid fillers add volume and reduce lines and wrinkles. There's the one, they're the ones that kind of puff you up. Okay. And this one says it creates, um, increases collagen production. So uh, you know she's what? she's dabbled in skin tightening procedures as well. She said, we've done a little ultrasound, uh, or the doctor said, we've done a little ultrasound tightening a long time ago. We did the little soft wave, which is an ultrasound based tightening device. So these aren't really super They fired invasive. a rail gun at her face. <laughs> these aren't really invasive things. Okay. Right. And so yeah. light touches. Well, I think it works. Yeah. You should look like you were born within the century you were actually born yeah. in. Right, yeah. Right. Have you guys, and I, for some reason, it keeps showing up on my, uh, I guess I'm watching a lot of Hulu because I'm watching uh, Fargo, but these commercials for, it, it, it's a pill, I think, that you take for this eye bulging disease? Yes. Okay. I've seen the commercial. The woman's wearing glasses and then she takes them off at the end? Yeah. yeah. So she won't, go, she won't go in pictures. Right. So you see her kind of like, Standing in the background with her sunglasses right. on while all of her girlfriends are, and t- are taking pictures. Casey, it's a, it's a, it's a thigh, I believe it's a thyroid-related condition that causes that bulging eye d- issue, okay. correct? I, yeah. I don't know. All, all I know is that uh, there is a drug for this and that there's there's enough of a... I, I mean, they're making a commercial for it. What's so your I guess question? I, um, just to, to, have you guys seen it, that's all. Oh, okay. Yeah, 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 okay. Yeah, yeah, I thought yeah. you wanted to... I thought you had an observation about it, but uh, they don't show... In the commercial, what the bulging eye looks like. They they. Can you give me a straight answer? 
there anymore. They want you to go. There's usually a link or something right. like that. Right. Yeah. Right. Go yeah. see if you want to see the before pictures. But in the new one case, they rip off her sunglasses and these two red rays come out <laughs> and split the party table in half. Oh, oh my God. She's like Cyclops. Like Cyclops. That's insane. Yeah. All right, so I thought this was kind of nice. Christian Bale uh, broke uh, broke ground Wednesday on a project that he's been pursuing for 16 years and uh, the building of a dozen homes and a community center in Los Angeles intended to keep siblings in foster care ah, together. That's awesome. This is something, something that's really near and dear to his heart. Uh, so he stood with a grin and a shovel full of dirt alongside local politicians and donors in the decidedly non-Hollywood city of Palmdale. Oh, good for you! Uh, north of Los Angeles, but uh, Bale just wasn't playing Bruce Wayne and lending his name and money to a charitable cause. The project was his brainchild. Cool. And one that he's long lent his labor to, getting his hands dirty on Wednesday, standing in actual mud after the uh, storms that have come through there. He said, I would have done it all if it was just here by myself, and uh, it was an interview uh, that he did of a large vacant lot between a public park and a bowling alley. Um, he lived. He's lived in California since the early 1990s, and he wanted to build a community after hearing about the huge number of foster children in L.A. County and learning how many brothers and sisters had to be separated in the system. Yeah, that's horrible. That's awesome that he's doing this, though. Uh, so he said, I didn't think it was going to take that long. He had the idea of it around 2008. That a very na naive idea about uh, kind of a uh, getting a piece of land and then bringing kids in and brothers and sisters living together, sort of singing songs like the Von Trapp family. Uh, but he learned that it's way more complex. He said these are people's lives, and we need to be able to have uh, them land on their feet when they age out. There's so much involved in this. I just want to say I love you, bro. Oh wow! <laughs> yeah, Bale show. Uh, even uh, even Bane, Bane has come around on that. So uh, that's really. He was really touched by that, and uh, and he wanted to help out, and so he got his boots on the ground and is uh, making it happen, That's which awesome. is very cool. Yeah. Uh, so let's see. Dwayne Johnson is reportedly in discussions to rep reprise his role in Ma as Maui in the upcoming Moana Two, following uh, Disney CEO Bob Iger's recent announcement of the sequel's release. This is live action, correct? No, this mm. is a an actual movie because they're also or, doing a live action. Well, there I have some on that. Okay. So while the announcement didn't specify casting details. Uh, they indicated that Dwayne Johnson is close to finalizing his return in Moana 2. Uh, also, uh, Alui, uh, Alui uh, Cravalho is also in talks to return as Moana, though her negotiations are not as advanced as Johnson's. Uh, this development suggests a delay for the live-action Moana film. I just watched the uh, Moana again uh, over the holidays. We had the family party. That, that movie is so like beautiful looking, yes. uh, yeah. uh, especially the the colors, the uh, when the the volcano, you know, becomes alive, right, yeah. and all that. It's just incredibly rendered. Who were we talking to earlier this week? Stephen Glickman about animated movies, yeah, right. And and so this movie has a release date, Moana two, and it's this year. And they haven't what? even started it. I think that they've started it, and I think okay. that they're doing exactly what he was talking about. That they've been working on it for three or four years. And they voiced it. They just haven't voiced it with The Rock. Okay. Yeah. And yeah. so The Rock is finalizing these negotiations you're talking about, Preston. Oh. And then he comes in, does the final recording, and that, that's the movie that they release. That's right, because he was telling us yesterday they'll put um, <clears throat> voice actors, placeholders. That's right. Just to get the movie going. But up and until then, this point. Then they bring yeah. in the actual yeah. star. Is Christopher Jackson going to be in it? Uh, he's the guy who plays George Washington in Hamilton, and he I, plays the father. I can't remember if he... Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I did not know that. And you're a huge fan of his singing. Uh, but he doesn't... Isn't singing enough stuff. I, I, I there's nowhere I, I tried to hunt. Is he down. playing George Washington in this? <laughs> Possibly. Yeah. yeah. It just depends on the timeline of the movie. <laughs> Uh, all right, a couple other things. Uh, Rolling Stone reports that the Investigation Discovery released the first trailer for a new docuseries about Dan Schneider's Nickelodeon on Thursday. Oh, wow. oh boy. It's called Working for... Uh, this is according to the producer, Christy Stratton. She said, Working for Dan uh, was like being in an abusive relationship, she says in the trailer. Right, Ricky. <laughs> the preview for Quiet on the Set, The Dark Side of Kids TV also reveals that... Uh, three child predators were employed by the network at one point. Whoa. By the way, you played that uh, right, Ricky. He's Ricky from uh, Better Off Dead. Yep. Um, so, yeah. So, uh, and at some point, police found troves of child pornography <laughs> and Ziploc bags, each one with a girl's name on it. It was a, it was a uh, I forget, one of the actresses basically said he was the uh, Harvey Weinstein of Nickelodeon. Ah. Yeah. You see who's in the trailer? Mark Summers. Yeah. Oh, my God. 
Uh, the four-part series premieres on March 17th, so that'll be one to see. Uh, and also another trailer came out today. I was watching it with Nick earlier. Uh, the Paramount Pictures uh, had dropped off the official trailer for the prequel to A Quiet Place. Um, Nupita Nyong'o, Alex Wolf, and Joseph Quinn are returning cast member. Uh, Jaiman Hansu are going to be there, and it's you see the video or the the trailers. Monsters make their descent onto the earth. Uh, the film is set to reach theaters on June twenty eighth. It's called A Quiet Place Day One. Looks awesome. So in the second one, in the beginning of the second one, you see that what we believe to be uh, them coming to earth. There's something <clears throat> coming down in the sky. Uh, and so this is before that even. Yes, this is day one, and they, they come en masse. Right, right. Like, they're just tons of them all over the place. They, they <laughs> land in New York City and just start ripping the, the city apart. So it should be pretty, pretty interesting. Cool. Yeah. yeah. All right, we will, you know what, we're going to jump right into movies opening for the weekend <laughs> since it is Friday. We got Lisa Frankenstein opening today. It's comedy horror romance starring Catherine Newton, Cole Sprouse, and Carla Gugino. Uh, a coming of rage love story about a misunderstood teenager and her high school crush who happens to be a handsome corpse. After a set of playful, horrific circumstances bring him back to life, the two embark on a murderous journey to find love, happiness, and a few missing body parts along the way. Running time's now are 41 minutes long. It's rated PG-13. Wide theater release. Rotten Tomatoes score 52%. Also opening this weekend is Turning Red. Animated comedy fantasy starring Rosalie Chang, Sandra Oh, and Ava Morse. This is uh, a re-release, is it? It's a re-release, okay. yes. Okay. This came out. It went straight to streaming uh, initially. So we talked about this the other day. Yeah, because I've seen it. May Lee is a confident, dorky, 13-year-old torn between staying her mother's uh, dutiful daughter and the chaos of adolescence. And as if changes to her interests, relationships, and body weren't enough, whenever she gets excited, she poofs into a giant red panda. It's an hour and 40 minutes long, rated PG, wide theater release and streaming today. Rotten Tomatoes scored 95%. It's a really good movie. I loved it. Yeah, and likewise. And then finally, Here for Blood opens horror comedy starring Sean Roberts, uh, Maya Misalejevic. I'm getting that wrong, I'm sure. Uh, Joel Farrow. Uh, in this throwback 90s horror, a rowdy pro wrestler struggling to make ends meet agrees to fill in as a last-minute replacement for his girlfriend's well-paying babysitting job. Upon arriving at the secluded family home, he meets the precocious... Uh, that's it. That's it. That's okay. where the synopsis ends. Okay. I could. I like. I'm sure there's more, but that's all they wrote. Running time two hours. Rated R. Limited theater release. Rotten Tomato score eighty eight percent. So that's a good all one. Right. All right, ready for the clips now. Most TV shows are robbed of the opportunity to have closure at the end of their series, which makes Joseph K's situation extra special. Here, the creator of Transplant talks about wrapping next year. Here we go. I had this idea from the beginning that if it made it that long, it would be the story of him redoing his residency with an overall arc in mind for that and sort of, uh, you know, view of sending him into the world at the end of that and, and to see where he got and how he put down roots and what parts of his past we were specifically going to explore in that four sort of season window and it's gone really yeah, yeah, well. big whoop, no yeah. one cares. Uh, the season three finale of Transplant will air tonight on NBC. Here's our next clip. The new movie Sun Coast is a touching film that hopes to touch on the nostalgic times of viewers. And here, writer and director Laura Chin discusses the look of the film. I think our intention with it was to make it feel like the 2000s, but like cooler than the 2000s. Because <laughs> I think when you look back at some of these images of people and the outfits they were wearing and the very thin eyebrows and that some of the choices were not as cool. Um, and so I think we were trying to, you know, make, make it feel like a memory of the 2000s, but somehow cooler than that. Could you shut up? Suncoast is streaming on Disney Plus today. All right, there you go. That's your entertainment report. You're feeling the excitement, aren't you? I am. Yeah. I'm feeling excitement, and I am gazing at some very intense-looking bearded <laughs> and mustachioed men <laughs> sitting in our studio right these, now. They, these supers came to play. Yes, they did. These these warriors. These warriors of the Golden Bowl. That's right. <laughs> 
It's a Super Bowl Friday here on the President and Steve Show. Super Bowl number three. We have, have not done this in years and years and years. So we have, obviously, we took a couple years off because of all the uh, the pandemic and all that stuff, but it's always been a favorite of ours. Yeah, absolutely. And we have eight restaurants that are represented today and a variety of soup styles. We're going to find out about each one of them as we go through the morning and sample them. We're going to kind of stretch it out a little bit. Right. Uh, we also have our food-focused digital creators are going to help us judge. We, we've decided to branch out as far as the judging goes. Some expertise would help. How can it just be us yeah. alone? So we've uh, brought in some people that have made food their uh, you know, their business and find out what they think as well. And uh, by the time we get to hopefully our 9 o'clock hour, we will be able to crown our Soup Bowl champion from Soup Bowl number three this morning. So hopefully you'll be playing along with us. And hey, have some soup on your own. Please. Yeah. In fact, from the places that you hear today, you may want to go check them out and, uh, uh, you know, give them some business if you hear a particular soup that sounds enticing to you. Most definitely. So I think we're I think we're going to take a break and I think we're going to I'm going to have some soup. Yeah! How about that? We're going to return in just a second or two. So hang out with us. And on top of that, we're going to do things like the connoisseur. Our buddy uh, Adam Farrar is going to be stopping by too. So hang out for a bit. And we'll do Galentine's Day invites as well. we got to fill that up. We'll be right back. WMMR. It's a Soup Bowl. Soup Bowl. Soup Bowl. <laughs> From Preston and Steve. Soup Bowl. Soup Bowl. WMMR 93.3 Everything that slurps Tomato and split pea <laughs> Potato, broccoli French onion and gumbo Wonton and gazpacho It's underway now. Ladies and gentlemen, you know, the earliest evidence for soup and human culinary practice dates to the upper Paleolithic period. I did Back not. to the Paleolithic wow. period. Yes, when thermally altered rocks became commonplace in the archaeological record. Wow. Uh, cobbles were heated on the hearth and then placed into the water to bring it to boil. However, the antiquity of soup is highly contested based on ethnographic evidence. Some archaeologists conjecture that early humans employed hides and watertight baskets to boil water. Oh, I love watertight baskets. I know, I do too, especially <laughs> hide ones. Yeah. Yeah. Especially like when things. the rocks are uh, in it. The, the traditional French cuisine uh, in that uh, soups are classified in two main groups, clear soups and thick soups. Uh, the established French classifications of clear soups are bouillon or consommé, and thick soups are classified depending upon the type of thickening agent used. Purees are vegetable soups thickened with starch. Bisques are made from pureed shellfish or vegetables thickened with cream. <laughs> Cream soups may be thickened with bechamel sauce. Bechamel's the chef. And a voulet. Uh, I, I'm, Nick, this is French. I don't okay. know. Uh, Voulets. How do you know. spell it? V-E-L-O-U-T-E-S. Uh, Velois, I think? Velois. Yes. Yeah. Uh -huh. are, are thickened uh -huh. with eggs, butter, and cream. Other ingredients commonly used to thicken soups and broths include rice, lentils, flours, and grains. Quick question, mm -hmm. Soup Authority. Yes. Uh, is there any one particular culture or part of the world? I would assume that most most civilizations had some form of soup. I would think such so. an obvious. Yeah, I don't really know. So they're uh, like like where it started. You're asking. Yeah, because I think it'd kind of be a kind of an ecumenical thing, right? Where you'd have. Well, uh, so, uh, small boiling pits are present in, on the uh, Graviation site of Pavlov 6. That's where Kathy always sits. So, <laughs> that's all I know. As about. long as there's a boiling pit, yeah. <laughs> you're good to go. That's all I have to say about that. Yeah. Uh, many popular soups, listen to this, also include pumpkin, carrots, potatoes, pig's trotters, and bird's nest. It's a uh, oh. pig nut. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, there is like actual bird nest soup, right? Like, yes, I've heard of it. Yeah. I don't know what it is. I remember seeing some documentary at one point where they they featured, uh, you know, these people that would climb up into the caves and and grab these nests and then and then make soup out of them. Make soup out of the nest? Yeah, it's a delicacy because I guess Steve, I don't know what it is, but there's something about <sighs> the, the material that they use in making this nest. The yeah. birds do that make it. Uh, taste it's my good. understanding. Yeah, yeah it doesn't right. sound doesn't sound enticing to me. Mm. Okay. Well, uh, nonetheless, soup is a, is a long time, uh, you know, culinary adventure that humans have been dealing with since 
the Paleolithic age, from right. what I understand. Goes back far. I remember as a kid, I was not really a massive fan of soup. Chicken noodle soup was my soup. Uh, and or um, Italian wedding soup, okay. which my father would make. Uh, uh, and then my... Um, my palate expanded, and now it's impossible to consider a world without soup. You know what's interesting <laughs> about uh, about this competition, the actual the Soup Bowl, which is about to get underway? Is that a a sanctioned by the NFL? No. Oh. The interesting thing is that our chefs, like, uh, nobody's all bubbly and happy to be here. Like, they are... No one's bubbly. They're, no, they're, like, <laughs> serious. They, they, came. they have their game faces on. Aren't they most came chefs to play. like that? Not always, but, you know, I, I don't know. I just thought this is, the, the bottom line is, they're not taking this lightly. Right. No, uh, there are two things you want in the culinary world. You want approval from the James Beard group and the President Steve show. Right. And so it's, it, <laughs> I can it's obvious that they're, they, they feel the, the weight, the onus of that. Yeah, did, aren't you picking up an air of seriousness in that yeah. room, Casey? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 so uh, I think we I need mean, to. I mean, I don't even want to go out there. I know. <laughs> Kathy, it's a little you. scary. <laughs> they came to soup. <laughs> <laughs> All right. But we're going to get this underway. We're going to oh, we're, yes. we're going to make it happen and we can start it right now if you like. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, let's get going. Ladies and gentlemen, let's begin Preston and Steve's Soup Bowl 3 in 2024. So we are going to the way we're going to word this out is each break that we stop to chat for a bit here, this being the first one after our entertainment break. <laughs> Uh, we're going to bring in three restaurants, and we're going to try out three different soups. We're going to meet these chefs or uh, restaurant tours behind these soups yes. and ask them a few questions, have them tell us a little bit about it. We're also going to meet a couple of our uh, food content creators, digital content creators. These are the people who help guide us to where to eat in the area. And they are going to judge as well. And the way we're going to judge this, since we have eight competitors, okay, I think the best way to do this is probably... Rank them uh, point-wise on your scorecard, and we're going to keep a little scorecard on our own of, uh, I guess, one to eight, don't you think? One to eight? All right. And then we'll add up the points. What's up, Casey? I'm sorry. Is your mic now? Oh, yeah. Now it's on. Yeah, yeah. Uh, one to eight sounds good to me. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And right. so eight being a maximum experience, yes, correct? I think so. Eight, eight, your favorite. Just rank them as your favorite. Right. And then we will reveal who the winner is at the end. So it's going to be tough, man. And so you can keep the score as you go along. All right. Uh, and we'll uh, total it up. So same thing with our uh, our influencers, our food people here in the studio. So let's bring in the Westmont Diner. Westmont Diner. Yeah, from Haddon Township, New Jersey. We have Scott and Gus who represent. And could you guide him over to the microphones over here? Yeah, that'd be oh, awesome. Thank, thank you. you. All right, so uh, let's go to, I believe it's Chef Gus who I met a little while ago. No? no. Okay, hang on a second. What's your name, dude? I'll just do it, stick it that way. <laughs> I'm Chef Scott. Chef Scott. Scott. Yeah. There we go. All right. And uh, this is Gus, who I met earlier, who we uh, led to the bathroom. Had to, had to go have an early pee-pee. <laughs> Make it a pee-pee. Yeah. <laughs> All right. You guys seem very serious. Well, we have to be serious. Yeah. I understand that. <laughs> serious business, man. The, the, the food business ain't a joke. It's a, it's a cutthroat world, right? That's what they say. It has to be. It's much like yours, I'm sure. Yes. All right. So tell us about uh, Westmont Diner. Either one of you guys. Well, what Westmont you... Diner, uh, we've uh, the, they've been in business for like 20 years. They had a former location on Cut on um, Haddon Avenue. Then they moved to their current location at Cutthroat Boulevard. Uh, and... We do everything fresh from scratch. Homemade. Um, and that's a big, a big point of pride is that you're doing everything from everything scratch. Everything from scratch. Yeah. You know, I make my own mayonnaises. We make everything. It's uh, a lot of work. We do theme nights. We have Sundays with Sinatra. We have uh, oh, cool. Sunday music, all Italian pasta made. We do steak night on Wednesdays. We do um, our gourmet burger night. I was in a burger brawl a couple years ago, placed pre-pandemic. Nice. Um, so we've definitely, I've been in here with you guys before. Oh, cool. I, used, awesome. I, I used probably have one of your burgers. Yeah, I used, I used to be with Brewski's, uh, J.T. Brewski's. Yeah. I saw the last show there, man. Yeah. Yeah, excellent. Whoa. But I, so now we do everything from scratch, and we're trying to uh, just uh, give everybody a better, newer diner experience, all the great food, and now customers are fighting over soups there. Good. So, <laughs> well, you know what? I've got the soup in front of me here. Uh, Scott, why don't you tell us a little bit about it, This please. is our uh, uh, chicken yoki soup. Uh, I made it uh, just uh, actually a few weeks ago. A bunch of people really uh, enjoyed it, and they were... And then people call ahead now to reserve the soups, which has the, become a problem dude, because there's fights. This is a new recipe, though? Yes. I Relatively just, new? Yeah. I kind wow. of crab, I, I was making yokis for our Sundays with Sinatra, and then I had some that I didn't you know, use up. I'm like, let's put it in a soup. and Holy hell. This is out of the world, out of this world. It's delicious. Mm -hmm. This is fantastic. Yeah, this is the best. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
Oh my goodness. This is the best soup I've had all day. Yeah. <laughs> we have a winner. <laughs> we, uh, we there's a little bit of a kick to it. There's a little bit of like a tiny hint of spice. Yes, I, I tried like the underlying layers of spice so you get multiple layers. If you keep eating, then you'll lose mm. that one and you'll get another one. And and so what am I tasting initially? There's a little bit of underlying of cayenne and ground That's mustard. It. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, a little bit of mustard taste. Yes. I like that. Um so I I haven't, I haven't detected really any like uh, lumps of, of gnocchi in here. Are there Oh, some? Yeah. oh yeah, I got oh, some. Yeah. Oh, see, yeah. I, uh, oh, there it is. There's you got robbed. One. I found yeah. that little got, guy <laughs> with the homemade gnocchi they tend oh, to is. sink down, yeah. Mm. Yeah. Every, mm. Everything mm. top notch mm. and they the chicken uh, oh. is perfectly prepared. So tell me about the vegetables that are in the soup. Uh, we have um, celery, carrots, Onions, basic mirepoix, and then we added up uh, spinach. Fresh a little spinach bit of at the fresh end. spinach, yeah. yeah. Yes, at the end. Dude, that is out of this world. That is fantastic. Gus, is it one of your favorite things on the menu? All this stuff's good on the menu. <laughs> As you see, Gus no, was the... No, for real. His, his <laughs> soups, I mean, you got people coming in for his soups left and right, and they can't, and they run out all the time. They call, they call them reserve them, and people yeah. have fought over it. Over really? Oh, oh yeah. People come okay. to the back door trying to buy whatever's left Wait, over. Wait, seriously? No, yeah. 100%. Oh no, for it, real. It's a soup thing over there. It's a, it's, I started a thing. It's a soup That's thing. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. I want to uh, keep eating it, but I also want to stop because we got like seven to go or whatever. It's so damn good. Like the bowl is, they put way too much in this. <laughs> yes. It's a full bowl of soup right now. So what we're going to do from here on in is have smaller portions because we want to be, we'll, 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 we'll I was detonate. trying to fill you guys up from the beginning. Thank yeah. you. So you smart win. move, actually. But, um, but yeah, we, we don't want this to go to waste for sure. That is absolutely Fan freaking And I'm going to leave some here with you guys for the rest of the day. The people come in. And, and hey. All right. Yeah, Excellent. yeah, yeah. All right. We got to get our, our digital creators their soup, too. Uh, yeah, Marissa's working on it. Yeah, All right. Well, thank you. Westmont Diner. Thank you, guys. Yeah. Well done. Well done. The chicken excellent. gnocchi, which is kind of a, I guess, a riff on kind of chicken dumpling, but Similar, gnocchi instead. The Italian version of that, if you will. I love it. Excellent. Thank you, guys. Appreciate right. it. My pleasure. Uh, and so that is wonderful. Westmont Diner, voted best diner in South Jersey, by the way. And they call ahead and they want to uh, they want to make sure that they get their hands on that chicken gnocchi soup. I'm going to have to. Yeah. I'm not going to score right away. I'm gonna it's wait. hard, man. You know what I mean? I'm yeah. going to have to. Um, Hard scoring the very first one, but especially is... one that was that good. All right, so we have our, our next uh, group that's here with us, and it's uh, the Kibitz Room ah. in Cherry Hill. We have Josh and Brandon who are here this morning. Hey, Josh hey. and Brandon. How you doing, guys? Hey, hey. Who's I didn't get a chance I'm to Josh. meet. You're Josh or Brandon. Nice to meet you, Brandon. Nice to meet you guys. They look happy. Yeah. 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 Who you guys are, early and do soup? Hey, you guys are, are smiling. This is awesome. Uh, yeah. And so the shirt you're wearing, it says, we serve our <laughs> balls big and our salami and hard. Our salami hard. <laughs> <laughs> they got a sense of humor. I love it. So tell us a little bit about the, uh, the is it kibitz or kibitz? It's kibitz. kibitz. It's kibitz. Tell us yeah. a little bit about the kibitz room. So kibitz room is a Jewish style deli. Uh, we serve Cherry Hill very well. We've been around for 20 plus years. Uh, we make pretty much everything homemade right in store. Um, this is what we do best. This is Jewish penicillin. So hopefully <laughs> if anybody's sick, they'll feel better after they eat this today. Yeah, so we oh, I'm sorry, sure. to, sorry to jump in here while I'm eating, but... We wanted to have a variety of soups and styles yeah. represented. So when we saw a matzo ball soup on the on the entry, we're like, okay, we definitely have to give this a try. Um, is it, I, I got to imagine it's one of your most popular items. Right? Oh, yes. yeah. Okay. It's excellent. Wow. Yeah, yeah. we probably yeah. sell close to a thousand quarts. Do you? At yeah. Least. And these are huge. Yeah, we're making matzo this is actually quart pots third all size. Week. Our matzo balls are the size of our fists. Are you kidding? Yeah, wow. we did this just for you guys so yeah. we wouldn't mm. take up the whole container. Huh. <laughs> How do you make a matzo ball? Like, yeah. Walk, talk me through it. Walk me so through it. So you got matzo meal, you got egg, you got some baking powder, salt, pepper, garlic, olive oil, what and is, then you just kind of simmer in boiling uh, stock water. What is in matzo meal? Matzo is it's like ground, uh, ground matzo. up matzo. Oh, kind of like flour, but matzo. Okay. All right. So, really? you guys add is is now I, I've only had matzo ball soup on, on a few occasions, but is dill usually a part of the yeah. recipe Still for matzo yes. ball? Yep. Okay, because that that's a nice, awesome little flavor. Really good. There's really chicken, good. <laughs> chicken in here, and this is yes, this like you said, the penicillin. If you're feeling uh, a little bit under the weather, this will do you upright. Oh, uh, right? this is grandma's recipe. Wow. How critical the broth? The, the broth in and of itself is a critical component, right? Some oh, people get it. dismissive, and that's when a matzo ball soup will falter if the broth isn't robust. Or if right? you have a very hard Gallet matzo ball. Soak. <laughs> there we go. Yeah. Let's soak it. All the flavor in there. Are so you guys? Are Casey you guys? Loves old school. What do you think, Casey? <laughs> oh yeah. I well. So for me, so far, um, I have actually had to go to the kitchen um, to uh, microwave the soup. 
because I'm I'm I am a soup purist. You are, yeah. and and both soups so far the temperatures weren't right, which yeah. I don't think is your fault. Uh, but I needed to do this under perfect. <laughs> I, I'm taking this very serious, <laughs> and course. I am a matzo fan, oh, right? Yeah. Um, I go to a place around the corner. It's what I get every single time I go there. I got a Jewish deli around the corner from my house. Always get the matzo soup when I go there. This is supreme. It is. Ah, really, really, really there you good. Go. It. Are, are you guys uh, owners or chefs or? He is the owner. I'm the manager. Really? Yep. Okay. You look too young to be the owner, dude. Yeah, it's sad, right? Yeah. Right. <laughs> no, it's good, man. He's more the owner than I am. Yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, We've been along in this business I mean, for we're a long both time. in the blood. Both of our fathers uh, uh, started it. And uh, ran it for a long time, and then oh. we kind of took it over over the years. Okay. How long has it been around? Twenty plus, uh, about twenty-two years now. Wow, okay. wow! This might yeah. sound like a silly compliment, but the carrots are delicious. Yeah, yeah right. <laughs> Nick, I was right? thinking the same thing. <laughs> They're so it's, good. It's, it's just a classic old school soup. I mean, if you don't like it, something's wrong with you. <laughs> well, well, you're right. I mean, you're right about that. <laughs> like, for example, you'd go to this is what you would order to find out, uh, like. Sometimes you just go and you go to an Italian place, order the spaghetti. How do they do yeah. the basics? Uh, and, right. and and if you you take this it's kind of care that. with the matzo ball soup, then you know everything else is going to be awesome. Yeah, you know it. well it's done. The matzo ball soup. Well thank done. That uh, is... Thank you. Go fish, by the way, Casey. Oh Big my shout God. out for the I fish fans. Yeah. 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 Hey, we gotta get tray up in here. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we gotta get tray up in again. Here. You know, next time he's in the area. It never hurts to butter up the judge. Never, never. And we will say fish mug. I'm like, come on, really? Um, so the kibitz room, where in Cherry Hill will people find? It, they want Off of Springdale it. Road. Off of Springdale Road. And in the Holly Ravine Shopping Center. Okay. And matzo ball soup. You got to have that if you go there. Yeah. What, what else would you recommend? Matzo ball soup, pastrami, corned beef. The whole deal. Uh, tuna salad, chicken salad. We got prepared foods. We got bakery. How thick are the sandwiches? Everything. Yeah, One stop shop, baby. Yeah, yeah. Cheese steaks. We got the best cheese steaks around. A lot of cheese steaks. We do a pashami cheese steak. That what, is what's pashami? I don't. I'm, I'm not familiar. It's a smoked cured meat. And smoked it's, cured meat. Yeah, it's pastrami. Oh, pastrami. Yeah. Oh, pastrami. Yeah, pastrami. Oh, pastrami. Sorry, I misunderstood. Uh, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Pastrami. <laughs> I know. Yeah, we chopped it up. Pastrami yeah, we is. Saw a lot of that. <laughs> Excellent. Yeah, it's hot. We steam it out. We slice it. Uh, it's banging. Yeah. Right. 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 Love it. it. Keep it room. Thank you, guys. Yeah, Josh, yeah. 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 Yes. Rock You're, the ball. No. You've officially been entered into... Is this fish? This is fish. A little okay. chalk dust torture for you. They is this cold ball? Made their mark into the uh, the soup bowl. So, I, yeah, I thought he was saying something else besides. Uh, well, he's talking about how the pastrami goes into one of their cheesesteaks, which it sounds uh, interesting to me. I'd like to does. try that. Yeah, it's, sounds really good. All right, so our third one that we're going to try right now in round number one. Wow, he was the first one here this morning. The Metropolitan <laughs> Diner and Bar in North Wales. This is David Nabbit. <laughs> how you doing, David? <laughs> Are we a little tired? Yeah, just a little bit. I don't know how you guys do this for 20 some odd years. Oh, man. <laughs> I know. It, it's a little bit early, a little but bit. it's a, a perfect time for soup. So, uh, All right. So uh, wow. I was, this is the one I was most intrigued by, cool. uh, just name wise, because the name of the soup is the truffled five onion soup. Oh my God. Right? Oh my God. I can smell you it. Had some. Dude, did it you have some? Delicious. This is so excellent. <laughs> when you guys, when you, when you sent your entry in, one of the things that stood out to me, it says, do not call it French onion. We can't, we're like, remember when Fonzie was like trying to say he was like, sorry, like, I'm sorry. Right, right, right. right. Yeah. We're like, yeah. we're like we're, 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 ah, we yeah. can't even say the word. Yeah, uh, absolutely. <laughs> this is excellent. Oh my God. What's the all So right. what, what goes into it? Kathy's yeah. got questions. So yeah. okay. No, go ahead. I, yeah, uh, what goes into it? What is this? No, like? we have the, the we have the Spanish onion, we have the red onion, we have some shallots, we have some garlic, we have some uh green onion, oh. we have some uh sherry and uh some uh thyme, and uh yeah, we top with the gouillard and uh hit it with the crouton and boom. Yeah. And there's there's a richness to it. Yeah. Is that the truffle? Oh uh, yeah, and that's the that's a little kiss of truffle. All right. Absolutely. Well, yeah. What you didn't do is you didn't overdo the truffle. Right. That's it. That's easy to do. Totally. Um, totally. So I'm just getting a little fla a little hint Perfect. of that, and it's fantastic. It is also, it from the look of it, seems a little creamier than a lot of onion soups that you get. That's why. That's why we don't want to go with the other soup. Because, okay. Because you you can't even see. The, <laughs> yeah. the other onion. It's the other onion. The other onion. <laughs> yeah, it's it's thicker and it sticks to your ribs and in wintertime it's just amazing. Like yeah. I said like I said in my entry, we go through 20 gallons a week like Do you? in a heartbeat. So, like, so when people come in they're coming in for their They're coming in yeah. for that. Uh, and, and, but it, all the tastes blend together really well. Thank like you. it's really really oh, well done. Yeah. My and this goodness. will this will listen, you love me or hate 
hate me for this, but like you will never, you'll always remember us from this point on because when you have French onion at your other spots, you'll always think of this yeah. at this time right now. I'm going to take a bath in this. Well spot. done. <laughs> it's, I got it, plenty in the bag. <laughs> it's so good. It's absolutely Thank you much, guys. phenomenal. Did, who came up with this recipe? Was that uh, you, David? You would ask me that. <laughs> oh, God. I've been there 14 years, and it was there when I got No there. kidding. It was. It's just tricky. This well, has been a, a soup. Actually, I got to say, all of our soups have been consistent since I've been there. So uh, they are tried and true, and I, I can't. We, the only thing we do change is a seasonal soup. That's the only thing that we do change. What's your runner up to this in popularity? Because it's got to be your home run. What's your what's your runner up? Uh, our, our, our seasonal soup would be the uh, the butternut squash. A butternut yeah, squash. Yeah, yeah, all right, yeah, we, all right. We do a butternut squash. Did you well, describe is... the cheese already? What's that? Did Gruyere. you describe? Yeah, oh, okay, Gruyere. so and it's just some um, shredded Gruyere. Yes. So what's good Nick's too is that I, I almost well. died on a classic <laughs> the soup that shall not be named. <laughs> yeah. Uh, soup. Because uh, they, it gobbed up in my throat. But yeah. this is uh, this is the perfect way to. Uh, I'm eating the wrong one. Yeah. yeah. Everyone is tremendous here. It looks like you differentiate from the other kind of soup, yes. uh, it, which is <laughs> a lot of times they will, or, or most of the time you'll find it where they put that Gruyere cheese on top and then they'll bake it. Right. Uh, and then you get the big globs that you can choke on. Right. You right. guys don't do it that way? Uh, we do. We, we, oh, do, you do We do, do, do it put it on your salamander. You know, you, just because we do put it on your salad. But, you know, the, the difference with our soup and the other soup, sometimes the bread soaks up all the, you know, yeah, yes, yes, so, yes, yes. and you get a whole big thing of bread and cheese. And you're like, where's the broth? Yeah. So that's why this is great, where it's everything's already in there. It's thick and it holds up. Wow. So yeah, this is buddy. clearly going to be, <laughs> but three soups in, <gasps> and they're stellar. Oh, my God. Uh, this is going to be, this is going to be, yeah, a battle to the death. It's yeah, going to be there, tough. And I'm going to love every second of yeah. it, man. No, tush push, man. We're on, we're on the one yard line. <laughs> Let's go. Question, David. Where's Metropolitan Diner and Bar? Uh, we are at 750 Upper State Road in Montgomeryville. Okay. And uh, we're uh, right up 309. What's uh, what's around you? Because I know that area well. Uh, it's the Montgomeryville Mall. Yeah. Uh, right, right across the street. Costco, we share a part. Well, I don't share, but uh, Costco is across the street yeah. from us. All right. I, I have to go there. Yeah. Uh, so, wonderful. All right. Thank you, David. Hey, guys. Thank you very much. You got Thanks an amazing Super Bowl. Hey, 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 Metropolitan, oh, Metropolitan Diner and Bar. Wow. This oh has my been God. This is <laughs> challenging. No, this is going to be impossible. This is a great day. I mean, this they're all putting, is. obviously, their best foots forward. Feet. Nick, foots? I, feet? Feet? Yeah. yeah. I have Foot my seats. first. What's he's? First time I've ever had a soup boner. <laughs> it, it just doesn't happen. Usually it's bone in soup right. or something like right. that. No, but no, now, soup it's, boner. Now, it's, now I'm an Audi. Look, he's got a boner. Uh, Marissa, do we want to meet a couple of our digital uh, creators, food? Let's, let's do it. Content yeah. creators. Yeah. Who yeah, do you yeah. want to bring over? We'll bring over Hector. All right, Hector. 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 What's up, Hector? What's up? Good morning, guys. Thanks for having me. Nice to see you. Uh, Hector, what do you go by online? Uh, I run the account Water Ice. Water Ice. Oh, yes. You're Water Ice. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. And where do you do most of your social media posting about uh, uh, all things food? Uh, what well, I IG is usually like a hot, like a big account. Instagrams your big, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, right. And you're and and you you're you're very active. Very active. Yeah. yeah very gotta cool. Be. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Absolutely. When uh, what, have you ever done a deep dive on soups before? No, this is the first time. So you guys are popping my cherry today. Ah, okay. oh, yeah. we popped your soup cherry. Yeah. 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 <laughs> cherry water ice. What, cherry what are your, <laughs> some some of your favorite things to uh, to create content about food wise? Um, I mean, I like to go away from the cheesesteak stuff and yeah. like, kind of like you know, of course, I like kind of dive into like independent shops, cultural foods, yes, things like that. So yeah, like you know, because there's a, gems. a rich bounty of yeah, that here, yeah, yeah. and and obviously it's all good. Yeah. But but again, you know, we, when we talk to the chefs like you know Nick Elmy or whoever comes in here, they want. The recognition for all of that that's out there and these uh, these smaller places, these businesses like today that are, you know, that have been on a corner somewhere and have just been rocking it that need the attention and you help facilitate that, correct? Exactly. Yeah. And, you know, in other neighborhoods, you know, because, you know, obviously, like, Fish Town or Liberty Center City is pretty hot. Like, I, I like to try to go to other neighborhoods, too, when I can kind of, like, spotlight there. Nice. Uh, Nick is scrolling through some of your content. Casey, I saw something on there about Wetzel's Pretzels. I've seen it. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Shout out to Wetzel's Pretzels. I went yesterday, snack. I had to get a quick snack when I was in uh, down in Center City. In the fashion district. Had you ever been to... The uh, gallery. Uh, yeah, that's, that, that's how I knew it. I went there one time yeah. when I was in 1989 to yeah, get I used to Z work Camarichis. there when I was the gallery. You used okay. to work there? Yeah. Where? A total sport. It was like a Jersey hat spot. Right? Oh, used to run, like, wow. Yeah. But real quick, had you ever had a Wetzel's Pretzels before? Uh, Yeah, actually, I know. Those are like my people that run it. Okay. Uh, so I did social port. You know. Okay. And there's, uh, there's Asian owners, like Lunar New Year, so it fit right in. Yep. All right. Uh, so uh, what do you think... Did you have any of the soups yet? 
I had the one. So it was really, really. Well, you got to eat them all. We got to yeah, yeah, get, get your extra money. I have them all. All right. We're all going to be voting, yeah. so keep that in mind. All right. Yeah. Thank you, man. Yeah. Appreciate it, Hector. Yeah. Appreciate yeah. it. Yeah. You can find him at Wooder underscore Ice. All right. If you want to check him out on Instagram. And let's do one more. Marissa, who would you like to bring over this time? Dave. Who are we going to be? Dave? Dave. All right, Dave. 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 Dave with his uh, <laughs> at Feeding Time TV. Is that on Instagram? It is on Instagram. Excellent. Where are you from, Dave? Originally from South Jersey in Runnymede. Okay. All right. But yeah. now, I'm, now I'm Philadelphia. Nice. Over in Fairmont, I guess. We lost say. a sex balloon one time in Runnymede. So. Yeah. 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 Hey, how long have you been uh, doing all things food on social media? Uh, I started during the pandemic. Okay. And what uh, motivated you to do that? I was bored during the pandemic. <laughs> uh, what, what's funny is I started out as a failed cooking show and transitioned into highlighting restaurants' food instead. Are okay. you a trained uh, uh, chef? Or no, just, not but, at but all. You just, have, <laughs> you just have a love and fascination for I'm it. just fat and love food. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. That's yeah. all the requirement you right? need. Man. Listen, you I got swear passion. Yeah. Yeah. When, listen, and I watch, you know, a lot of these guys end up showing up on my, my Instagram feed. And, I, like, I got to tell you, and this is going to sound really shallow, but when I see a skinny food person, and I'm like, I don't trust him. Knock it off, right? <laughs> Knock it off, right? I'm like, I need to see somebody what with just a know? couple extra pounds. By the way, you got to remember, it was someone who's a little, who was overweight who recommended one of your favorite desserts of all time. That's right. So your theory holds up. Yeah. We were in Disney <laughs> World. What was that? What's the favorite So uh, dessert? Preston and I were in Disney World. And uh, we uh, went and asked a, a plus-size person where to get good ice cream at Epcot. <laughs> and she said, you got to go to France and go to Les Odyssey Glacé. Uh, and they, she was right. And she was absolutely, <laughs> absolutely <laughs> right. It was amazing. Mm -hmm. Without question. We won't steer you wrong, all, all right? right. Uh, yeah. Dave is at Feeding Time TV. What, what are your favorite cuisines? Do you um, have any? Is there a way to narrow it down? Or? That's a hard question, yeah. but I would find myself eating the most... Uh, Chinese and Korean right now. So, oh, okay. so what, yeah. what, 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 the Korean is taking off. A lot of people yeah. are really. Um, yep. and, and by the way, it's been labeled, um, you know, along with Mediterranean as, as a great diet for health. Yeah, uh, and, and kimchi is good for the stomach. Kimchi is good for the <laughs> yeah. stomach. No, it's, it's not like, yeah, it is. It's for, for, it's for, it's Your gut say. health. Yeah, yeah. but I will say, in in, um, in honor and celebration of Soup Bowl Day. Uh, and I do love Chinese food, but they uh, any Chinese restaurant I've gone, I, I think they lack in the soup cat. I think they need to up their soup game in Chinese uh, restaurants. I don't know uh, if you agree with me on that one. They got wonton soup, egg I drop I soup. They one. got some staples. Dude, yeah. I'm, I'm loving yeah. their Hot soup. Hot and sour yeah. is yeah. another good one. Yeah. And then, uh, what about Japanese, like miso soup and stuff like that? Yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll, I'm, I'm probably more uh, into miso than I am to any of the other ones. And I'm a soup guy, but miso like... Miso horny for yeah, that stuff. I will, I, I, I will not do a wonton soup or no a sweet... Kid. Yeah, it's just not enough for me. I love okay. wontons. I do, too. Yeah. yeah. Oh, really? I like egg yeah. drop soup and not worth it. sour. It's all good. I feel like Kathy. I'm like, it's not worth the calories. It's not worth the calories. Right? I, I can appreciate that. The thing is, though, it, and I and I will back you up on this case, is that you very rarely do you find a variety. Uh, it's usually pretty True. much the same. Yeah. yeah. But, 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 what, get it, which is what are you there good. for, right? Yeah. Yeah. Because I mean, yeah. you know what to expect. I want to recommend Sankey in Chinatown. So okay. they're known for their Peking duck, but they have an amazing soup. So yes, it has wontons, but it also has duck, pork, and vegetables. Huh. It's not your standard okay. wonton soup. So it's try your, that. I trust you. If All you don't right. like it, I'll buy it for it. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but no, I'm, I, I'm confident. All right, Dave. Thanks for being here. Good luck with the Thank you. judging Dave. today. We, we trust Dave. your knowledge. Dave. All of our all of our food content uh, creators that are here this morning. Marissa? Can I just say I'm really proud of Dave? He's a co-host on my Delicious City podcast. Yes. Oh, that's awesome. With Very Eli. Nice. So yeah. he just started doing radio and podcasting a few months ago on top of all of this stuff. And he's killing it. So he's I just have to very, throw it out there. Very well spoken about it. I love it. Absolutely. Uh, all over my mic here. Dude, this <laughs> is going to be so difficult. Uh, this is going to be so hard. We just had three amazing soups. Westmont Diner had the chicken yaki out of this world. Uh, the Kibitz Room in Cherry Hill brought in their, uh, what they're known for, the matzo ball soup, which is fantastic. I'll say it's the best matzo ball soup I've ever had. And then Metropolitan Diner and Bar in North Wales with this insane truffled oh. five onion. And we're just scratching the surface. We got five more that we need to sample. So if you're looking for food for the big game, yeah, yeah. get yourself some yeah. soup, friends. All right, it's the Soup Bowl, and we... Probably should take a break. Come back and we're going to do another round of soups. I think we're going to do two in the next one because right. we're going to do the uh, Bizarre File in yeah. conjunction with that. And we'll continue on until till we get a champion. Hey, hey, this hey, morning hey. of Soup Bowl 3. Hey, hey, hey. We'll take a break and we will be right back. Stay with us.
Kids. Traffic on 93.3 WMMR. Thank you very much, Kathy. Just a reminder. Yeah, yes, there's a horse in there. Okay. okay. Yeah, I know. I just, uh, horses love soup. Yes. I got it. Uh, so we'll we'll get more of this underway in a moment. Uh, we have to do the Bizarre File first, but before all that, we have to usher in a little so, no sad bro love. Kristen and Steve's Bizarre Final. Brought to you this morning by Special Olympics Pennsylvania, inviting you to join Mr. Nick McWain and Team MMR at the Philadelphia Polar Plunge. It is tomorrow at Citizens Bank Park. Info at phillyplunge.org. All right, a wild video shows a moment. A pickup truck plowed into the ocean at a Florida beach <laughs> that was closed to traffic. With the clueless driver later trying to justify his antics by telling deputies that it was not his fault that, quote, the truck don't surf. <laughs> the truck don't surf. At the time of his arrest on Tuesday, John uh, Berskowitz also uh, bizarrely claimed that he thought he was in England and asked the deputy, are we not in Kansas anymore? He asked the Bobby, you mean. Uh, Bruskowitz was busted after sheriff's office said that he drove around a closed gate with a do not enter sign uh, with uh, without paying a toll fee. And proceeded on to the beach, which was off limits to cars at that time because the tide was too high. <laughs> Footage recorded by a bystander shows Berskowitz's uh, vehicle driving into the frothing surf with waves repeatedly smashing into the driver's side. At one point, the driver is seen attempting to do a donut <laughs> before bringing the vehicle to a stop facing the horizon. As a trail of emergency vehicles raced to the scene, he briefly opened the driver's side door before closing it again and trying to bag his truck out of the water. <laughs> That's what I get to do. Once he was back on dry land, he was questioned by deputies about his dangerous stunt <gasps> seen on the body camera, uh, body camera video released. You can hear him say, it's not my fault the truck don't surf. Best and, mug shot in a long time, oh, too. Yeah. He looks so happy. I mean, he's like <laughs> giddy. He's beaming. It's hilarious. I did it. A deputy pointed out that he should not have been driving on the beach <laughs> while the gate was closed, for which uh, Berskowitz said, has had his bizarre comeback saying, I thought I was in England. <laughs> Where they allow that. The deputy says, you thought you were in England? You're not in England. And he goes, are we not in Kansas anymore? <laughs> and the deputy just goes, no. <laughs> so uh, he was ultimately arrested on a misdemeanor charge uh, failing to pay the access fee. <laughs> he impresses me as a guy who loves life. Yep. Yeah. All right. So there is a family, family, the Lima family, who live in Mount Airy, and apparently they found a door on the roof of their house. That's awesome. And uh, Fabian Lima, who lives at the home, said that his first thought was that it might be the door that could have fallen onto his home from a plane. He said, if it really did fall from an airplane, I would have thought that it would have gone right through. I didn't ever really think that that's what it was, but it looked so much like that that it had to be investigated. So they called the FAA with their concerns. However, Lima said that the investigators who visited the home simply told them that it was a metal object and they should hold on to it until given the all clear from the agency. That's pretty wild. It's on, not, not a conventional door. On Thursday around noon, the FAA said the object didn't come from any known aircraft. You know what it kind of looks like? It kind of looks like a restaurant door where yes. you're in the, in the kitchen. Yeah. It's got a porthole yeah. on it. So he said, we just determined the metal object might be as not yet <coughs> Just what the metal object is. Come to known as. Come to known as has not been yet <laughs> determined. So they are working on it. Uh, a debate over a new spa is brewing in southern New Hampshire, where some residents in Atkinson are taking a stand against the diaper spa, yeah. a nursery-like business for adults who role play as children and wear <laughs> diapers. According to its website, the Diaper Spa is open to all diaper-wearing individuals who seek acceptance, respite, and care. 
Photos of the spa's page show a space decorated with the soft comforts of a nursery, complete with toys, folded diapers, and an adult-sized crib. Dr. Colleen Ann Murphy, the spa's owner, offers a range of services that include virtual play dates at $200 an hour, as well as a $1,500 all-day diaper B&B experience that promises rejuvenating pampering for the little one inside pampering. of you. Yes. <laughs> uh, but for now, Murphy said the vast majority of the diaper spa's business involves telehealth services and life coaching. A recent Christmas-themed event a, uh, featured a festive story, freshly baked sugar cookies, and stocking to take home. So in the world of, uh, like, fetishes, this is a thing that... It Believe it or not, the large part of the clientele are like high-powered attorneys and mm. people who have stressful jobs who just want to become babies. Yeah, a board-certified integrative medicine physician and sexologist Murphy settled in Atkinson in 2022. The home-based spa was a recent addition. Adult baby diaper lovers are people who, quote, act voluntarily, uh, act a voluntary regression to a previous age and or wear diaper for psychological reasons. Uh, the authors speculate that several uh, physiological and psychological factors uh, could cause ABDL fantasies, including uh, continence issues, childhood abuse, and the premature loss of a parent. Uh, so some people are freaking out because they think it's a uh, sex-related right, thing. Right, right. But according to the doctor, it's not. They just kind of role play, and that's all there is to it. But uh, other people... They're going to be the best neighbors you could possibly yeah. have. And this kind of small town are concerned that it might be a fetish. And in fact, some have been uh, going online and saying that it's a fetish place when it really isn't. So there's a big Dude, hubbub about it. You open up a business that sells diapers. Yeah. Right there. Totally, right next mm -hmm. door. Yeah. All right, and one more quick story, and then we will wrap it up. Let's go with... All right, here's a follow-up story for you. Um, you remember this? Uh, two Florida students were expelled from their Christian school over an OnlyFans decal on their mother's car. Oh, they finally got rid of them. They had spelled the children. Oh, man. Uh, Michelle Klein, Klein said that she put an OnlyFans decal on her car to draw more attention to her page. However, the decal sparked a fight at the school, and she was banned from the school's drop-off line. About a week later, school leaders at Liberty, Liberty Christian Preparatory School uh, had expelled the students altogether. Administrators said Klein violated policies in their handbook by using the decals at the school. In the letter to address Klein, the school said that she, quote, obtained an even larger vinyl lettering scheme that covered the entire back of her vehicle's tailgate and mockingly posted a photo of the larger display on social media referencing the school's request that she remove it. Did she uh, agitate by showing up in her porn hub Hummer? Uh, the letter ci cites a Florida law that makes it a crime to knowingly provide minors with the means to access sexual content, mm -hmm. which school administrators argue Klein's advertisement did by providing a direct link to her site. So let me ask you this question. Uh, we now accept OnlyFans as, as, a, as a porn location because when it first started... It was kind of like a place for your... It was almost like a, uh, a Patreon, right? That's exactly what it was. Yeah. 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 I mean, I mean, my was, upcoming site is not going to be porn. No, no, yeah. it's not. It's going to well, be just foot stuff. Feed stuff. And by the way, if you go to OnlyFans, it's not like you are you have porn right yeah. there. Right. You have to have a membership and yeah. all that stuff, yeah. right? You have to pay the person who you want to see. So. How do you quickly access to porn? Well, yeah. so actually yeah. you don't know until you pay, so maybe my site is porn. <laughs> oh, oh, maybe it oh, is. Oh, selling. Okay. I like see. it. Okay. Good marketing. Thank you. Good. Uh, Klein previously said that uh, the decals link does not include explicit content and is a source of income for her and her family. She said she wants to keep her decal on the car to bring in more customers. So I wonder how many more customers she's gotten since the story. Oh, crap yeah, dude. It. Those You're kids welcome. can have their own school. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. All right, and there you go. That's what I have in the bizarre file. Ladies and gentlemen, Soup Bowl Day. Yeah! It's a Soup Bowl! Soup Bowl! Soup Bowl! From Preston and Steve! I love it. All right. Tomato yes. and split pea. We're having all kinds of soups. Potato, broccoli. A full variety. French onion and gumbo. Representing the uh, various soups that anybody could get. Spacho. I love this all whole thing. Yeah, I, yes. I love the fact that these businesses are getting to highlight these soups that have been 
crowd pleasers for a long time. Yeah, so we sampled three in the last segment. We're going to do two here now. It's going to break me. I, I'm, it's I'm, okay. I, I'm in Drago. I know. I'm getting full already. Yeah. Uh, so we have two more soups that are going to be represented. We are bringing in uh, Los Sarapes. Is hey. that uh, next? Yes. That is correct. Thank All right. You. Welcome. And we have uh, Megan. And who else is joining us? Your name? Liz. And Liz, yes. Megan and Liz, thank you guys for coming in this yeah, morning. Thank you so Excellent. much for having us. Now, did I say that correctly? Los Sarapes? Yes. yes. Okay. And how long have you guys been around and where are you located? So we've actually been around for over 30 years. Uh -huh. It was started um, by our current owner's parents. Okay. So we have three current locations. Okay. The one is just outside Doylestown in Chalfont. We also have a Horsham location as well as a Bluebell location. Okay. Now the Bluebell location, I've I've seen that. I've driven yeah. by that for years. It yeah. moved uh, a couple of years ago, right? It did from a, not um, far. No, 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 yeah. not far at all. They had a single standing building and then they moved into the complex. And you're gonna hate me because I've driven by it for years and I never went there. Oh, I know, man. right? Well, well you, you know what? My, my wife has an, <laughs> my wife has an allergy to cilantro. Uh, and so anytime we go where there's, uh, you know, Mexican food or anything like that, cautious. we have to be cautious. And so I, we, just, we quit going. And I love Mexican food. Go without her. So I, I know I need to do it. <laughs> All right. Tell us about the soup that we're going to try, please. Okay. So our soup today is a crema poblano. Ooh. It is inherently vegetarian. Oh okay. Uh, um, so we roast the poblanos. It's with a mirepoix, um, a bechamel. And... Very simple seasoning. Uh -huh. Is this a it's just a it's common? Some, is this is a common soup. Whoop. There's a little bit of spice to yeah. it. Mm -hmm. it's yeah, got yeah. A, it's, it's got, got a, 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 an a under. Spice, yeah. Ooh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Spice tone. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but, but, but not not too much. Not uh, too spicy. We wanted no. to make sure you guys' yeah. taste buds were on fire. Yeah. Yeah. Ready they to are. go. <laughs> no, so, uh, I love it. A poblano, uh, poblano peppers are, are fairly mild, aren't they? they? Are. Yeah. Is that all the spice coming from that poblano in here, or is there something else added to it? Okay. Really. Cause we love roasted poblanos. We when they when they're in season, oh man, we buy them up like crazy. And especially roasting them, that's going to bring out more of the flavor. Yes. So. Yep. Oh, and it looks mm. a little bit like split mm. pea, but it has far more. <laughs> where do you uh, where do you get your kick. peppers? Where do you get your ingredients? Like, do you, do you source them locally? How does that? How do you even end up with the poblanos in the restaurant? Mm. I will. S Everything is locally. secret. Go ahead, yeah, got to be yeah, close yeah, to yeah. the Sorry, uh, close to the mic. There we go. Everything is locally. Uh, okay. You know, we support a lot of local people. Um, for a lot of vegetables in there. Nice. Wow. From all the poblanos, you know, jalapenos, cilantro, you know, all the Mexican spices and, and vegetables. Yeah. Yes. And, and, yep. and the bread is, what is the bread in it? Just a standard. Yeah, this little, just, um, just, just, you know, like this crouton. crouton. We, crouton. Yeah, we make it, oh, our own croutons wow. in there. There's cheese wow. on it, though. It's excellent. Yes. What kind Parmesan of cheese? cheese? Like, you know, kind of like Parmesan cheese, they call queso oh. fresco. Queso so fresco. Queso fresco. Mm -hmm. so, yes. Yes. This, that's key. Yes. Oh. This little guy right here. <laughs> Dip, dipping that little guy in there and getting a bite of that. Oh my God! This, yes, oh. go ahead, sir. You're, what, what's your name? We didn't. My name, name is Luis. 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 All right. Yes, it's mm. delicious. Yep. Wonderful. Yep. Absolutely wonderful. Um, and you were born in Kensington, correct? No, no. I did. <laughs> <laughs> no, we actually born in Mexico City. Mm. Born raised in Mexico City. Very no kidding. We yeah. opened the place in 1993. Okay. The okay. First location. Um, when I ask, uh, do you have a tres leches on your menu we as do. well? Okay. All right. Tres leche with the flan. You know, every single dessert that we oh, have wow. today okay. is. Homemade, yes. And the, uh, I'm sorry, the location again? Uh, this location is in Shalfon in Bucks County near uh, Doylestown. Okay. Uh, we also have Blue Bell and we have Horsham as well. Wow. I got something for you, buddy. Excellent. Ready? <laughs> <laughs> Awesome. <laughs> Five points for bucks go. How how popular is this uh, soup with your uh, with your popular. diners? Yeah, very very popular. Yeah. You know that's why we keep it in in, uh, in the menu pretty much all year round. Yeah. Yeah. No, I yes. can see why. It's all right, awesome. and it yes. it has just enough heat for me. Okay, mm -hmm. so when I first take that bite, I'm like, all right, we got we got we got a spicy soup <laughs> yeah. here. Um, but now that I've let it settle, and that's what you can find out is when you when you taste something spicy, yes. you wait about thirty seconds, right, a right. minute. Because that heat will increase, and this has stayed nice and steady. No, and it's, uh, it's just right, because I'm, otherwise I would have to stop if it was too spicy. I'm a wimp when it comes to spices. <laughs> like, same with me. We don't like to make too much this spice is fine. in the food. You know? I mean, yeah. we can make as spicy as you want, but usually Mexican food is on the mild side, believe it or not. Yeah. And then we can spice it, you know what I mean, with different kind of peppers. Terrific. Mm. Yes. Terrific. Yeah. yeah. Wonderful. Good. Awesome. Me encanto uh, esta sopa. <laughs> See. Okay. Hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Well done. Yeah. Casey also knows how to say yeah. library. Yeah. Wow. Bibliotech. Yes. I will make it very hot for you, Casey. I know. Uh, <laughs> I thought we did. <laughs> All right, Liz, Luis, Megan, thank you guys for the little setup. 
The Shell Fonts location. That wow. is a really, really I've never yummy. Had, have you ever had this before? Yummy no. soup. I've never had yeah. poblano soup before. Wait, did Megan tell you her story? Do you know Megan's story? Uh -huh. <laughs> she was connected to, do you remember we were supposed to have that street legal helicopter drive to our station and it caught fire on oh, the highway? my God. She was connected to them. How do you, what, what's your, uh, speaking to I Steve's mic. I, I was the one who wrote in about it. <laughs> and um, we were supposed to come with not only that, but also the sideways van. Yes! Yeah! I forgot about the van! Yeah. And the helicopter, well, the helicopter caught on fire coming up. You on the way so, here! And it yeah. shut down the highway. The yeah. highway yeah. in Maryland <laughs> on their way up. Yes. But we still showed up. All right, yeah, you did. Because yeah. I'm like, do you still want us? Oh, my God. Well, That's now, bizarre. Now you brought the fire with the soup. So yes, that's excellent. Absolutely. Thank you. All right. Thank, thank you, you, Megan. Guys. All right. Let's do another soup, please. We now have from Gas and Maine in Haddonfield, New Jersey, Ooh. we have Dane and Danette who are here yeah. with us this morning. Good morning, gang. Nice to see Good you guys. Good morning. All right. Who's who here? I'm, I'm Danette. Danette and I'm Dane. Dane. Yep. Mm -hmm. Dane. You were very serious about this soup of yours. Uh, I don't know if it's so serious as uh, fun and playful. Well, but <laughs> you, you, had, you had a very serious tone where you're like, this is this is going to bring you back to your childhood. You were like, well, you were well, that's, driving that's it home to That's what I'm trying to, to do here. I'm I know, to I bring get a little it. nostalgia and fun uh, totally. you know, to the room. We agree. All right, so are you the chef? I am, yeah. Is this your recipe? It is my recipe, yes. How long ago did you come up with this? So I've actually been making this tomato soup for uh, at least a decade. Uh, it's what I used to do as my snow day special when I was uh, the chef in Philadelphia for like American Sardine Bar. Anytime it's snow day, we would have this and a grilled cheese uh, on, per and that's kind of ran with it, yeah. It's the and perfect combination. Do Absolutely. I understand that you just recently received a James Beard nomination? I did, yeah. How about that, wow. man? Under, in what category? Yeah. Uh, best Chef Mid-Atlantic, yeah. Best Chef Mid-Atlantic? Yeah. Oh, okay. my God. Congratulations. Yeah. Thank you. I, 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 know was, I was just as surprised. The uh, the soup is the uh, <laughs> is the star of the show here, but can you talk about your grilled cheese that you oh made God, here? Delicious. Yeah, so that's our uh, grilled cheese crouton, if you will. Okay. Um, basically, you know, you dunk it in your tomato soup as you would. Uh, my, my goal with this is to kind of bring you back. I cook with uh, heart and love and fun, and I want to bring nostalgia. So this is, I, I t tomato soup is like in my, is maybe my top. I, yeah. I love it. This is fantastic. There's a little sweetness There's to it. There's a sweetness it, to it. Which is excellent. Uh, and of course, anyone who is a fan of tomato soup knows you got the bread component, the grilled cheese, whether it be whatever you, you have. You gotta dunk something you in You have to have uh -huh. something in it, yes. How do you make the grilled cheese? Because like the, the cheese itself is sort of infused into the bread. Uh, so it's just a nice baguette from Baker Street, which is uh, kind of local to the area, and uh, just American cheese, good old classic. Yeah, USA. Yeah, it's delicious. And uh, do you um, <laughs> subscribe to the notion of uh, using mayonnaise on while grilling cheese? No, I'm actually a big fan of brown butter. Brown right? butter, that little toasty note. Yeah, oh, okay. Yeah. yeah, I like it. Not familiar with brown butter. It brings out a little bit of nuttiness, so you okay. should have like, a little bit more well-rounded. Flavor than uh, this is superb. Classic How popular is this on the the menu? Uh, this is very popular. So we go. Uh, we started probably going through about four gallons a week, and now we're up to about ten. Wow! Okay. And we are a very little tiny space. It's got like a crazy following. We got people lining up for for quarts and pints of it to go, taking it to their family's house. So it's uh, become a staple in Haddonfield. Gas in Maine is a, a smaller establishment. Oh yeah, we're a thirty six seat, ten table restaurant. Wow. Okay. I mean, how long has gas in Maine been around? Uh, we actually just turned one about two weeks ago. Oh, really? Yeah. What Happy were you doing birthday. before? So you, you obviously are accomplished here. What, what, you had another restaurant before, or were you? Yeah. What? So I was a chef in Philadelphia for a while. Um, I worked around in South Philly. Um, then we opened a burger joint out of the pandemic, kind of like a, a like a low key chill kind of vibe thing. Yeah. Um, and then this is like kind of what I do is like real like cooking like. Like uh, this is homemade. This is this has a but yeah. with a flair, honestly. Scratch cooking. So burgers and hot dogs were fun for a little bit, and then uh, this is more my passion. So we we do this now. To my ta tomato soup peeps, you've got to try this because uh -huh. uh, again, I oh. love the that little bit of sweetness really mm. makes it awesome. It is wonderful. Great job, chef. Thank you Thank very you. much. Appreciate Thank you guys Thank coming you. by here. Yeah. Yes, and me. Yeah. Yeah. Good. All right, so we got uh, we have three more soups that we have to work our way through. And uh, Marissa, we're going to meet one of our uh, food uh, digital content creators. Who do we have now? We have Josh. Josh, Josh. eats Philly. Hi, Josh. Josh hey, Philly. good to see you guys. Josh good eats morning. Philly. Thanks for coming by, man. Thanks for having me. What do you think so far? This is an amazing thing. I'm glad you guys are doing this. Obviously, we're highlighting so many small businesses, which is so cool. And I'm excited to try all these different soups. I feel like we have so much variety going on. Yeah. Have you, have you had any yet? 
I have. So okay. I've had the matzo ball soup, the yeah. uh, gnocchi soup, which was really cool, that Italian twist to it. Yeah. Um, and then what was the other one we had? You know, I saw you guys just had the uh, tomato soup. Yeah. That really good. We, we yeah. have to get into the that. Five, the onion, five onion, onion truffle. Oh, the onion soup. Which that is was fantastic. Uh, Josh, what's your story on, uh, on being a food digital content creator? It's a great question. So I kind of got into it by accident. I like to eat, but I opened my Instagram account back in like 2011 when a lot of people were opening accounts. My early photos were just like very moody, dark photos of coffee like everyone was doing back then. Yeah. Um, but then, you know, I started going out to more restaurants, you know, in Fishtown, Northern Liberties. And back then, that's when the neighborhoods were just kind of like, you know, coming to their prime. So I would post these photos and people would start sharing the photos with each other saying, oh man, that place looks so cool. And I'm like, well, it's just like around the corner from where I live. I'm just going to happy hour. It's like not a big deal. So it was like a snowball effect of all of a sudden, like I'm posting photos, people are sharing it with their friends. And then I somehow, I guess, became an influencer. But, um, you know, I never like started my account to become an influencer. Well, you know what you do? Happened. You do and all you guys do uh, is, is you tap it. Everyone... Hey, where's a good place to get this? Where's a good exactly. place to get that? So you serve as as the conduit, and you're out and about. They see you there trying it, and so you. Well, and once you are you are sort of um, vetting these places, and they trust your opinion, then it builds, correct? Exactly. And yeah. the crazy thing is, when it first started happening, I'm like, why are people tagging their friends in my posts? It's kind of <laughs> weird, right? Like I don't know you people. But it's like again the snowball effect of like all of a sudden their friends started sharing my posts and they started following me and then it's like all of a sudden it became you know a thing. Yeah. Josh, you hear from a friend that a great new restaurant's opening up. How far is too far away for you to drive? Ah. Like, never too far. <laughs> okay. ah. Never too far. Nice. In pursuit of I mean, I was just in Miami trying some restaurants. Oh no, kidding! Because why not? Yeah, <laughs> you know what I mean. Yeah. Especially By the way, this time of year. I, exactly. I, I, exactly. I want to point out that Josh won uh, Philly Mag's Food Influencer of the Year yeah. award. Yeah. Yes, it's still wild to me. I'm still pinching myself. <laughs> Good for you, man. So, so yeah. uh, just a quick question on on the, the 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 building of this and so on and so forth. And as you get. Who's the highest profile person who's cultivated or is attempted to secure your opinion about a restaurant? Oh, oh, okay. So you're saying like... Who, who came after you say, I need you to try out my uh, my establishment? Oh, or do they do that? One. That's a good one. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I mean, I've had like Steven Sarr okay. reach out, which I guess is, you know, really big in Philly. Yeah. Um, I'm actually going to Budokan tomorrow for Lunar New Year. All so right. That, oh, all that right. literally just happened. So I'm like, that's kind of, that's kind of cool. So yeah. no, kind of see what's going on there, feature that, and, you know, see uh, uh, kind of what they have on the menu for that. Excellent. All right. Well, eat up some soup and we'll yeah, find out what you're sure. thinking a little bit. All right. All right. All right. It's Josh, guys. Josh yeah. eats yeah. Philly. Yeah. And you can find him on Instagram. It's the Soup Bowl, number three, with the horse. Um, we do need to take a break. We're going to come back in a moment. We'll have our final three soups. And we have to have dessert because we got to do the connoisseur next, too. So we got to eat some ice cream with mini melts. Uh, and our buddy Adam Farrar is going to be here shortly, too, because he's going to be performing at Helium Comedy Club. We'll be back. Stay with us. Soup Bowl. Your traffic on 93.3 WMMR. It's a Super Bowl. <laughs> Super Bowl. Super Bowl. and Steve. Super Bowl. Super Bowl. And WMMR. 93.3. Everything that's right. All right, I think I'm, I'm going to make a uh, an exec executive decision here. You're calling an audible. I'm calling an uh, yeah, which you can do Absolutely. during the big game. Yep. Um, I'm looking at the clock, and I think we are going to have to combine Soup Bowl and Connoisseur into one segment. Okay. Got it. Here's what I would like to do, because Marissa has found, a, and Casey and I pulled together, and we found a lot of great soup clips from nice. movies. All right. So what I would like to do is do the Connoisseur segment. This is how it's going to roll out in conjunction with the Soup Bowl. So in between each Soup that we hear, I will play or that we try. I'll play one of our movie clips about soup All right. and get a winner that way. And then at the end, we're gonna have our dessert with our mini melts. All right, so like a regular meal. Yes, like you a have dessert meal. at the end. So I do need to mention this at the top uh, that the connoisseur segment is sponsored by our friends at Mini Melts Ice Cream. We've mm -hmm. got our own Mini Melts Ice Cream freezer in the studio. And we taste a different Mini Melts ice cream flavor during the Connoisseur each week. And today, last week we did uh, chocolate. Yeah. This week, vanilla. Yeah. My personal favorite flavor that yeah. doesn't have anything added to it. You know, that's sort of the way I roll. So uh, we will get that underway in a little bit at the end as where dessert should be. But in the meantime... <sighs> We need to have another soup. I know. Are you you getting the soup flat? Yeah, but I'm I'm good. Man, you, you play hurt. You play hurt. It is so good. It's so yummy. And you know what? And I hope 
that these chefs and restaurateurs are trying some of the others. They are. Soups yeah. and sampling around, yeah. right? Yeah, and, and it's great to see that sort of a communal soup spirit that we've heard so much about in, in the Bible. While there is competition, <laughs> it's nice that you can, you know, have uh, mutual respect and, uh, yes. and, you know, share these with each other. All right, are we doing the Piston Diner next? All right, yeah. gentlemen, Piston Diner. We would like to oh. welcome... Woo. What? You Hi. Oh, Hi. That one. Uh, we have Ishmael, who goes by Ish. Yes. Yeah. And we have uh, Renee, who is here as Renee, well. Yeah. Renee, and who am I missing? Uh, or. And Or. I met you earlier. Yeah. Nice to see you guys. Thanks for coming nice in this morning. Right. Uh, so oh. we have a, a soup that is piping hot, laid out before us here. I like oh, it hot. Yeah. What are we trying, guys? What soup is this? I have a... Uh, Cream potato leek. Cream ah, potato. Yes. It's one of my wife's favorites. It's very yeah. good soup for winter. Mm -hmm. Yes, mm -hmm. absolutely. Mm -hmm. In fact, does it pick up in popularity in the yeah. wintertime? Very okay. popular, very popular. Yeah, because this is one that can be served really uh -huh. hot. And, uh -huh. uh, yeah. and I, I also do in, in bread bowl. Oh, bread bowl. Yep, bread right. bowl. Can you do me a favor and just say... Is very good soup. Mm -hmm. That's good soup. <laughs> <laughs> That's perfect. I My uh, potato soup is kind of a tradition. It was in my uh -huh. family in the wintertime. Okay. We would call it uh, first snow potato soup. Sure. So when it would snow, that was our tradition. Uh -huh. The family was uh -huh. to make a potato soup. My mother used to call it shut up and eat your soup. <laughs> is, this, <laughs> is this a family recipe? Uh, that, that, that's my mother's recipe. Is it? I, I, I was her dishwasher. <laughs> oh, all day long. Really? Yeah, yeah. In the restaurant? No. The, just at home? The home, okay. yeah. All she right. always has fresh garden. Okay. I have to go pick up and uh, clean them up, and after that, clean the dishes. Real mm. quick, what was your mother's name? Uh, Nez. 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 I just wanted to say that, but uh, is she with us still, or...? Yeah, she's she's, okay. she's still right. around. Yeah, she has mm -hmm. um, she's great taste. This is my yeah. favorite yeah. potato soup. Oh, I asked yeah. her what she, uh, what soup I should do. She recommending this one. Okay. So, what, 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 any uh, so mm. ingredient secrets to making a really great potato uh, leek soup like this? I use my own spice. Oh. I mix like uh, about uh, twenty five spice together. Okay. Mm -hmm. right. Wow. Well, yep. they blend well. What yeah. I like here is that the the potato chunks mm. aren't like big. Right. Mm -hmm. um, you know, because sometimes I, just, I don't know. Sometimes it wants to be the star, even though it is the name of the soup. Mm -hmm. um, but the chunks can overpower. Mm -hmm. I know what you're saying, Casey. Yep. It can it can overdo it a bit too much. Mm -hmm. um, tell us a little bit about the Piston Diner, where you guys are located, and what your specialties are. Uh, we locate at uh, 813 Crown Point Road, Westfield, New Jersey, mm -hmm. and we have a little small town. Okay. And what do you, what's uh, what's Piston Diner besides the potato soup known for, food wise? It's actually we do pretty much everything homemade. Yeah, like ninety five percent, ninety percent. Okay. Mm. Now I, ha I have to ask because is the name a little problematic when people hear it? Uh huh. When they hear it, Piston is my, my gold name. Ah, uh, there you go. Uh, okay. Okay. I'm a, the first time I heard it. Lover, yeah. You know what I thought. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. What the pissed on diner? Yeah. 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 Uh, 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 yeah. I have this question often. often. Uh, yeah. <laughs> because <laughs> the, the food is delicious. Yeah. When we were talking, yeah. Stephen, we were talking about. I don't even know if we were talking about soup bowl. We might have just been talking about soup, and somebody sent me. Um, you guys uh, do flights of soup? I do. Yes. yes. Wow. Yes. That's his. Um, How many in the flight? Uh, three. Okay. But my daily soup is uh, 10 to 12. Uh, I do every day 10 to 12 soup. And we sell about like 45 gallon every day. 10 to 12 soup? Yep. What, did, what type of soup is that? I've never heard of that. I get up in the morning. Like no, I created 10 to 12. 10 to 12. 10 to 12 soup. Oh, I thought it was a name of the soup. <laughs> no, no, it's a different You have 10 to 12 soup. soup. Preston, I can do good that soup. for you. You got to try their 839 <laughs> soup. Oh my you God, you make 10 it. to 12 yes. soups. Right. Yes. Got it. Okay. Okay. It's a soup flight. That's like your dream. Yeah. <laughs> it is, honestly, it is yeah. my dream. And mm. I can't believe I haven't gone to Piston Diner yet. Uh -huh. Casey always orders a cup of soup. Uh, and an appetizer for his uh, yeah. entree, and and then a dessert as well. Yep. He likes Classic to get away. He likes to go across the board uh, to see what a restaurant mm -hmm. can do. So, uh, mm -hmm. how long have you guys been in business, by the way? Uh, I'm in this business 25 years. Okay, wow. and I'm in this location eight years. Eight years. Yes. Well, and you're, so, is it doing well so far? Very well. Good Very for well. you. Excellent. I'm the cooker. He's the eater. You can say. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Can't you, right? Yeah. Listen, I can't uh, blame myself. Right. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> He's a very around? good cook. Yeah. Absolutely. He's a very good cook. One more time. It's good soup. Good soup. <laughs> <laughs> he right. takes oh away my. a word each uh, time we ask him. Each time, right? Yeah. Yeah. Right. That's well, right. It gets shorter each time he goes. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Piston Diner in Westville, New Jersey. Thank you guys Thank for you being so here. Good luck. Good luck.
All right, let's play a soup clip and see if you can identify what movie this is from. Listen up, here we go. Um, what is the soup du jour? It's the soup of the day. Mm, that sounds good. I'll have that. All right, 215-263-WMMR. What movie is that soup clip from? And maybe we, if we have enough time, I'll fit in some uh, some kind of source stories. We'll see. But we have more soup to try. Uh, next, we are going to welcome uh, Catherine's so. Restaurant from Kennett Square, Pennsylvania, oh. which you would imagine... Yes. There's definitely some mushroom Gotta added be. to this particular soup. And this is, I think they're who we have next. Yeah. Uh, this is uh, one of two uh, crab uh, included Ooh. recipes that we have this morning. So uh, is this, uh, I'm sorry, what's your name? Mary Beth. Hi, Mary, Mary Beth. Beth. Hi. Nice to see you. All right. Catherine's Restaurant in Kennett Square, the mushroom capital of the world. It is. How yes. many things in your restaurant, uh, how many dishes have uh, mushrooms? Um, two right now, the wild mushroom crab soup. That's been on our menu for the whole, almost 25 years. 25 wow. years. So it, it, it's it's the main people. people uh, you yep. you got to try this yep. soup. All right. Exactly. And we sell it at the farmer's market every week in Westchester, the Westchester Growers Market. Is that Sherry? Oh, this is wonderful. Yes. Well, you can be too secretive because we're going to yeah. ask you specific <laughs> questions. Yeah. <laughs> mm, 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 yep. mm. Where do you get wow. the crab? Um, so local, Andy Gattoletto, Gattoletto Seafood, and our mushrooms are local, Porcini and Portobello from Bashiani's and Kennett, Mike Bashiani. Because you're not at all scrimping on the crab meat in here. There's no, no healthy we chunks. Use jumbo lump. Yep. Yeah, and yeah. we Delicious. haven't skimped, not even during COVID or inflation. Mm -hmm. Nice. It's a killer. Uh huh. Uh, Catherine, what is your position there? I am owner, co owner with my husband, Kevin McMahon, who's the chef. And how long have you had the restaurant? Almost twenty five years. Twenty five years. years. No mm -hmm. kidding. In in the in the food industry, that is a resounding and we're ridiculous BYOB. success. And you're and a BYOB. BYOB so you're for fighting all that the last of the Mohicans. Yep. <laughs> mm -mm -mm -mm. Wow. Yeah. Excellent. All right. Is this one of the things that you're known for? This soup. It is. Okay. We're known for that. Mm -hmm. And, and so. Yeah, a couple other things. Key lime pie, we just got best of for the main line. Really? Well, you know, you know what's, uh, these soups, the ones, they're all, um, all of the ingredients, and there's multiple ingredients, but they blend together oh. for this. You know what I'm saying? It's not like any anyone is the star. Mm. Uh, it, it makes this uniform taste. It's excellent. Uh -huh. It is wow. wonderful. Do people order this as um, like an entree? Uh, no, they always order it as an appetizer, though. And it's on every menu, even our private party menus. Gotcha. Oh, yeah. okay. And Which he... is what we're focusing on now. As of October 1st, we only do private events at the restaurant. We stopped dinner service and brunch. When, really? Oh. When did that happen? October 1st. No kidding. Yeah. And well, can I ask why? We just needed a break. Okay. After it was it was too much? 24 years, we were burned out after COVID and inflation and our food costs are insane. And as you can see, we don't skimp. So yeah, yeah. yeah. no a break. Okay. <laughs> Damn it. Well, <laughs> kudos on an amazing soup. Congratulations. And yep. thank you for bringing that pie this morning. You didn't ask me who Catherine is. Oh, who, yeah. yeah. All right. And who is Catherine? Catherine. <laughs> <laughs> so everyone, they just assume I am. Right. Who's Catherine? Catherine was uh, my grandmother, my mom. -mom. She was a waitress for 60 uh, years in Philadelphia. No, Katie okay. Davis. You should have said, you said, don't bring up that bitch. Yeah. <laughs> um, where did she serve? Well, um, when I was a kid, uh, 15th and Chestnut, Dairy Maid. Okay. And then I have a big photograph of her in the restaurant from 1930. She was at a place called Mitchell Fletcher's, which is underground where Reading Terminal Market is. Like in the subway, she had just been introducing the lunch meat slicer had just been invented. Wow. So I have a giant photograph. Oh, what a great cool. thing. Yeah. Wow, well, yep. for you and your family for being in the, and this is a tough business to be in and to do it all this time. It's really something. She'd be incredibly proud of you. Yeah, she would. She's that's around. It. That's all. She's around? In spirit. Yeah. In spirit. Okay, right. yeah. Excellent. Excellent. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you. Thanks uh, for having us. Appreciate, appreciate it. Our pleasure. It. Mary Beth, yeah. thank you for being here. Yeah. Delicious. Kennett Square, you'll find Catherine's Restaurant, and that is that is outstanding. And we just learned about the potential medicinal properties in mushrooms, Preston. Yeah. All right. Let's uh, let's go to the phone and see if somebody knows what movie this particular clip is from. Uh, what is the soup du jour? It's the soup of the day. Mm. That sounds good. I'll have that. All right, let's go to the phone, see if we can get a winner. We are looking for... It's Joe on the line. Hi, Joe. Good morning. Gadzoo. Gadzoo Show. All right, what movie, please? Dumb and Dumber. Kick uh, his ass, see, man. Yeah, yeah, yes, Dumb and Dumber. All right. Joe, you're a winner. That means we have this for you, sir. Joe, we got a pair of tickets to see the Flyers battle the Devils on Saturday, February 17th at MetLife Stadium as part of the 2024 Navy Federal Credit Union NHL Stadium Series. 
Tickets are on sale now at Ticketmaster.com. All right, we're going to play another clip. Let's see if you can identify what movie this soup clip is from. You know, people say, oh, but he's so much older than you. And you know what? I'm the one having to push him away. <laughs> yeah, we both have so much in common. We both love soup. All right. <laughs> Thank you. I love that we can we cannot talk for hours. <laughs> 215-263-WMMR. Call right now if you know the answer. All right, we're ready for our final soup. Yeah! I can't believe we've come to the end of the soups of the Soup Bowl. And Ooh. from Gitanos of Mount Laurel, we have Jeffrey hey. 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 How you guys doing? Wonderful. Nice to see you, Jeff. Nice thanks you, thanks for being here. All right, so Gitanos. There's more than one Gitanos, yeah, right? Yeah, it's a okay. franchise. Yeah, yeah. All okay. Separately owned, yeah. All right, and what is your position at uh, the location in Mount Laurel? I'm the owner. You are the, the owner. owner. All right. How long? Uh, since 2019. Okay. Uh, so, yeah, a handful of years. Yeah, yeah the location's been there about 40 years. I mean, wow. and you had the, the, the singular honor of uh, uh, becoming owner just before COVID, which yeah. is a term. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> which, yeah. listen, I mean, it, listen, it, it definitely buried some businesses and it and other businesses thrived. Everybody was yeah. staying home and ordering takeouts. So yeah, 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 yeah. So you guys business. did good. Yeah. All right, nice. so yeah. you originally wanted to enter something else, right? Yeah, my, uh, I just won a chili contest back-to-back -back years. Ah. Uh, Mount Holly Fire and Ice Chili. Uh, festival. Mm. Okay. So the, the, I, I didn't think uh, chili qualified as no, a soup. So chili is its own yeah. subsection, yeah. Yeah. And, and maybe we'll do a chili thing. So we did. Years yeah. ago, we did the... Um, what Mickey was it called? Gilly, Gilly, no, no, Millie Vanilli, Mickey Gilly, What the Dilly Philly Champ of Chili. That was what it was called. <laughs> I can't believe you remember it so <laughs> nice. uh, I love chili, Kat. So you have brought in the Alaskan Snow Crab Bisque. Yes. Wow. Tell us a little bit about that, please. Uh, it's a, a nice, creamy, smooth, very flavorful soup. It's got Alaskan snow crab in it. So we've talked about crabs before, and there's differences between crab uh, species, obviously, and subspecies. What's the difference between snow crabs and king crabs? King crabs are a little bit bigger, firmer meat. Snow crabs really sweet. And where do you get the most meat? Which kind of crab like yields the most meat? Uh, the sexual per pound? crabs. Uh, probably king crab is the, you know is the largest. Definitely. Yeah, gotcha. uh, but it, and and it also yields the most meat because sometimes just because it's larger doesn't mean it has quality meat. But the king crab is pretty much it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. By no, the way, I just delicious. did. I just did something I realized is completely futile. I put, I, it's very, very hot. I yeah. put it in my mouth and I started waving my hand in front of my mouth. <laughs> like yeah. you're going to. It doesn't off. really do anything, does <laughs> no, it? No, I thought you were no. getting the face. You got to go. <laughs> Is that what does it? Yeah. I don't know. And then, you, then you aspirate Nothing on really your. Nothing really helps. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You're so choking. Um, this is definitely the, the hottest uh, oh, temperature-wise yes. soup that we've had. And um, I, I take my the temperature of my soup very serious. This is a great temperature. It's uh, a really, really great temperature for me. Great job on the temperature. Yeah. Knocked it out of the park <laughs> on the temperature. Good job. Do you use yeah. mostly Fahrenheit or Celsius? What I, <laughs> what I do like in this, uh, Steve, not unlike the tomato soup that we had earlier um, from uh, Gas in Maine, it's got a little sweetness to it. It does. It does. And that's on purpose, right? Absolutely. I Absolutely. love it. Excellent. All right. So, Excellent. Uh, Anything else we need to know about uh, Gatanos, Jeff, you want to mention? Uh, we got $10 pizzas Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. We got a $40 football package for the Sunday for the Super Bowl. What's what that what, Yeah, well, yeah, seriously. Uh, you get a large cheese pizza. You get a large 17-inch cheesesteak, 10 Whoa. jumbo buffalo wings, french fries. Nice. Wow. Yep. What kind of right. cheese you use on your pizza? Uh, mozzarella provolone and uh, grande. You had me at mozzarella provolone. <laughs> nice. Come kiss me, you bitch. <laughs> All right. Uh, thanks, Jeff. Yeah, Great soup. Fantastic. There you go. Yeah. All right. Thank you to Jeff Excellent, from Gatanos. Really well done. All right. Let's see if we can get a winner. We need to find out what movie this clip is from. You know, people say, oh, but he's so much older than you. And you know what? I'm the one having to push him away. <laughs> 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 yeah. We both have so much in common. We both love soup. All right. Let's <laughs> Let's see if, we, <laughs> see if we know the answer. We're going to go to Scott. Hey, Scott, good morning. Scott! Good morning, y'all. How you doing? Good, buddy. What movie is that from? That's got to be American Pilot, that beauty blonde. Nope. Oh. That is incorrect. Oh. You got the right actress. You got the yeah. actress, yeah. but you got the movie wrong, and we still need somebody on the line to uh, try that out. 215-263-WMMR. Let's see if you know the answer to that. And uh, Connor's getting somebody right now, so yes. I want to get the winner first and play uh, the next clip. Uh, and then we're going to meet yet another one of our food uh, digital content creators. And then we have the difficult ta task of scoring and uh, putting... Because I've been waiting. I haven't scored anything oh, yet. Really? I, I've scored yeah, everything. I, I wanted to wait 
until I had everything first, and then I'm going to rank mine one through eight. Okay. Oh, so, all right. Um, yeah, because I have been kind of uh, tinkering as I've been going, just kind of like keeping, you know, uh, scores. And then when I try a new soup, I'm like, okay, well, then that affects my uh, opinion right. on other soups. So it's, yeah. a, it's a rolling. It's yeah. tough. I got it's it. Tough. That's what I'm doing. All right. Let's go to Jackie. Hey, Jackie. Jackie, are you there? I'm here. Thank you for using your signal, by the way. That's that's commendable. Uh, Jackie, what movie was that clip from? Beth and Show. Beth and Joe? Best in show. Best in show. It says Beth and Joe on our screen. Yeah, yes, Connor. best in show. That is correct. Nice job, Jackie. Hang on. Beth and Joe. Yeah. They're the best. Uh, uh, romantic right. tale. What are we going to give her? Uh, you got a pair of tickets to see the Flyers <laughs> Battle of the Devils. That's going to be Saturday, February 17th at MetLife Stadium. This is part of the 2024 Neverall. 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 <laughs> That's Navy and Federal, by the way. Uh, Credit Union NHL Stadium Series. And tickets are on sale for that game at Ticketmaster.com. Come. All right, Case, I queued up one, if that's okay. Yeah, that I, yeah, I want to um, use this one. What? All right, because we do have a longer version of that. Whatever, yeah. Just uh, no, 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 no. I think we need to do the shorter one. Okay, let's yeah. see if you know what movie this soup clip is from. Let's taste the soup. All right, I'll taste the soup. Where's the spoon? All right, 215-263-WMMR. <laughs> let's see if no. And we're going to meet our uh, final food uh, de- digital content creator. This is Chase, everybody. Chase, Chase, Chase. Hey, hey, hey. Thanks, guys. Thanks for bothering you at work today. <laughs> ah, we appreciate the bother, sir. Hey, so your Instagram account is at underscore chase at un, or at underscore chase underscore you. Yes, sir. The the letter U, which is uh, okay. I want to make sure everybody is aware of that. How long have you been doing this type of thing? Uh, just under two years at this point. Yeah, okay, it's relatively new. Was right. it another sort of product of uh, oh, pandemic? COVID passion yeah, project. I didn't yeah. realize that there was an audience for chubby bearded guys, but <laughs> right. I, I might have an OnlyFans decal on my car. Soon. Ah. Yeah. Uh, so at, at, at first, were you just kind of playing around with it and then realized, hey, this is getting legs? Exactly that. It started off as a coffee review channel during COVID. And then once everything opened up, I mean, you guys heard it so many times today. There's so many restaurants that need a little bit of help, right? Yeah. So it's 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 an honor. It's a blessing to be able to do this. But yeah, it got a little bit of legs. And people like to watch me on camera eat, which is interesting. Right? <laughs> right. Interesting no, it, it is weird. But, but just it, go with it. Yeah, yeah thank what, you. Yeah, yeah, Kathy's showing her feet on OnlyFans. Yeah, it's, yeah, why not? Whatever it takes. All right. So... Uh, what what do you what do you like to review? What's a, what's your favorite? Cheese steaks are definitely my niche. I grew up on top okay. of a pizza shop, so I in in Philly, so it just it works for me. And it's it endless. Yeah, right? it really. So is. again, it's like pizza. I mean, it, it, it is the kind of thing you can interpret in so many ways. It is. Yeah, food is so subjective. Right. So that's what makes something like today so hard. Yeah. yeah no, I'm absolutely. Sure. By the way, I love your Team USA Thank hockey you, jersey. Little Jimmy Craig. That's, that's <laughs> oh the greatest. Wow. Outstanding. I had a chance to meet him one time. It was a really super yeah. nice guy. Yeah. So when I first met Chase this morning, I said hi to him like we knew each other because I've watched your stuff on on Instagram Thank you. quite a bit. My buddy Jeff actually shares your reviews quite often. Oh, thanks, Jeff. Uh, <laughs> most recently, he did something for uh, for Pika's Pizza. Yes. Yo, uh, Kaj, Alan Delco. I like that you <laughs> will go to uh, the surrounding areas so you don't just stick to Philadelphia. Yeah. Uh, and if you do stick to cheesesteaks, uh, there's a new spot that uh, just opened up in media called Van Horns that you got to make your way over I've to. I've heard. My buddy, the, I think the godfather of meat was just out there. Guy yeah. talks like this a little bit yeah. with Cooper Sharp and she rolls his favorite. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah I've, been, I've, been put on, uh, I've been put on notice through Mike. Shout uh-huh. out to you. I think he's on uh, He's on another so station do you, right now. Do you still dabble with the cafes, with the coffee stuff? Or yeah, we'll go had... there. Actually, um, Feeding Time TV, behind when we first broke bread, he introduced me to Ray's Cafe and Tea Shop in Chinatown, which is absolutely Phenomenal. One of my wife and I's first dates ever was at no Ray's kidding. Cafe. Now, yeah. It holds a special place in my heart now, knowing that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, siphon coffee is something special. It's like a, That's it's where like a Casey was conceived. Yeah. Well, congratulations. <laughs> hey, real quick, tell us about your acting days, because you were in the movie Creed. Yeah, so uh, Creed was shot right there in uh, Chester County. In, or, I'm sorry, in Chester right. um, at one of the... the there you go, one of the yeah. shoots there. And I lied my way onto the set in the VIP section. So there's a moment where oh, Sylvester awesome. Stallone and Michael B. Jordan and I are sharing the screen. Oh my god! So oh, wow. it's pretty. It's pretty cool. And you know, Rocky's being in Philadelphia has always been a huge part of my life. Rest in peace, Carl Weathers. Yeah. yeah. Shout out to Apollo. So it was really cool to just lie to the uh, production <laughs> assistant, and but she's like, "You're you're not supposed to be walking there." And I went, "No, they told me to." And I just kept going. Yeah. And here, here That's how you do it, man. <laughs> you, you, know, you have to have a sense of purpose. Yeah. yeah fake yeah. it till you make uh, it, and it's worked <laughs> really well. Uh, the well, amorphous yeah. they told me to go. Like just using the word they yeah. sometimes gets you places. You got to well, walk in like you know, like you yeah. belong there. 
Yeah. yeah. Well, it, it, it worked well. If you're an assistant, the last person you want to piss off is they. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. They said I could be here. Yeah. So, Chase, we've got uh, we got some soup to judge, mm -hmm. and uh, I know you. Get, it's a tough decision, but it is. you got to write down your answers here. I, 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 you know, I've been keeping a mental note of where we're at. I have my one-two punch. It's neck and neck. Okay. Yeah. Oh, neck and neck. Yeah. But again, I Chase agree. is so subjective. But these are also good. Shout out to all the restaurants and the James yep. Beard Award winning, you know, nomination. That's absolutely it's, incredible. It's, but all you guys are doing something special. So terrific. kudos to you. Yeah. Excellent. And, and kudos for uh, for what you're doing. It's awesome. Thank you. Thanks for being here, Chase. Appreciate it, me, guys. Yay! And by the way, we have all of our food influencers' information. Excuse me, at WMMR.com, along with not only our eight finalists here today, but there were over 40 restaurants yes. that submitted. Now, we just had to go through and read the descriptions to make a decision on who was going to be represented in the soup bowl. And we just we, we went with a variety of different soups, mainly, and the passion that we read in their submissions as well. Yeah. And so that's how we chose the finals. But obviously, there's loads and loads and loads of great options for you. And most likely, with 40 or so, some odd restaurants on this list or something nearby you. And we asked only the people submit if it's one of their most popular menus uh, items on the menu. Uh, yeah. So I think you're going to be in good Absolutely. company. If you go to WMMR.com and take a look. All right. We need to find out if somebody knows what movie this clip is from. Let's taste the soup. All right. I'll taste the soup. Where's the spoon? All right. We go to, <laughs> we go to Dan. Dan. Hi, Dan. All right. Hey, guys. Uh, how are you? Hey. Great show. Love it. Oh, thank you. Thanks, brother. All right. What movie is it from, Dan? It was, are you kidding me? It's coming to America. Yes. Aha. Yes. Yeah. Aha. And that comes actually at uh, in the outtakes uh, at the yeah. or at, it's a, a post credit scene. That's right uh, from that part of the movie. So do we, what do we have for him, Case? We got a pair of tickets to see the Flyers battle the Devils next Saturday, February seventeenth at MetLife Stadium. This is part of the twenty twenty four Navy Federal Credit Union NHL Stadium Series. Tickets are on sale now at Ticketmaster dot com. Hey, it's Kunta Kinte. Hey, uh, cue me up another one, Case, if you would. Thank and you. Uh, Marissa. We have had to save room for dessert. So could you scare up some <laughs> mini melts for us? We are trying vanilla this morning, so we're going to need mini melts. We don't need a spoon because it comes with a no. spoon yeah. in it, oh, mind that's you. Right. All right, what movie is this soup clip from? Let's see if you know. Hey, come on, seriously, you guys. The food here is really expensive. The soup is $10. <laughs> come on, let's go outside. I'll buy you a cup of coffee. All right, 215 263 WMMR. Call now if you do know the answer. So we'll get to, we'll get our ice cream in here. We'll get our mini melts to cap off this incredibly uh, decadent morning. It has been. Of eating soups. So why not end with a little bit of mini melts ice cream? Yeah. This one's, this, uh, this cup is different. different. Yeah. yeah. It's a, it, it, yes. It's a. Uh, Oh, different color. What is that all about? What I mean, we've been we've we've become mini melts connoisseurs, experts. Uh, I'd say we have them uh, every single week. So this is uh, throwing me off a little bit. So You're going to be happy. All right, good because I'm a vanilla fan. You're going to be happy. Oh, I'm yeah. very much a vanilla fan. Marissa, I, take I'm, it away. I'm so sorry for interrupting. I figured this would be good uh, while you guys eat. Dane, who is our James Beard nominated chef, what did you just say to me? I said, "Oh, I love mini melts." <laughs> <laughs> and then well, he added. Oh, yeah, that's my weakness. <laughs> yeah. Go to Wawa, it just, like, screams at you. Yeah. So, that's you gotta a, have me. A James Beard-nominated chef. <laughs> you know we have an entire freezer. I was just told. Yeah. Watch out, watch out. I'm coming for it. Oh, my God. <laughs> this, oh, is, yeah. this is what I would get. Yep. This is the Mini Melts flavor that I would grab because I like... I like my ice cream uh, pretty simple. Yeah. Right? I don't like too much um, stuff put in there, and I am a vanilla fan. So, so I'm, I'm talking, I love vanilla as well, but this has an authentic, that, that we, we, mm. this is a we're talking about inferior mm. products out there. Uh, this is an authentic vanilla taste. Yum. I think Excellent. everybody here in the studio is very jealous of us right now, guys. We're gonna hook you guys all up with Minnie Melts. There you go. Right. Yeah. Don't you don't you worry. Everybody will be. We have we have a ridiculous <laughs> amount of Minnie Melts available, and we don't let anybody touch it no. ever because we're afraid they're gonna take the next flavor that we have to sample because we have not tried them all yet. You know who eats it all the time? Who? Jackie. Jackie. <laughs> Kyle. Kyle. Dude, I watch him eating this for breakfast all the time. I believe it. The dude has his his metabolism is yeah. pathetic. It's just uh, he <laughs> never gains any weight at all, and he eats like a beast. Uh, by the way, uh, vanilla mini melts. You can find them at family entertainment centers. 
like uh, Kalahari Poconos, Kathy. I know you've been there before. Ooh, yeah. Where they actually scoop <laughs> it for you slides. fresh on site, oh. uh, which is pretty wild. So the vanilla flavor is classic in every sense. If you're a purist, this creamy, delicious flavor is for you. And Minnie Mel's vanilla flavor is soy-free, egg-free, peanut and tree nut-free, gluten-free and sesame-free. But the classic is full of flavor, and it never, ever, ever goes out. Did you know style. that ice cream consumption stays relatively high during the winter, even during the yeah. cold yeah. months? Yeah, yeah. it's yeah. great. It stays consistent. You oh. know what I've never had, and I need to start doing, is I need to, because um, I, like, a, like a hot fudge brownie sundae or a hot chocolate chip cookie sundae with mini melts because it's colder, mm -hmm. and it won't melt as, you know what I'm saying? Like, you're, you're it, goddamn genius. <laughs> I am goddamn gifted. <laughs> Wait, when you put uh, when you put the toppings on, you mean? Yeah, when you well, it won't when you, melt the ice cream as as quickly. It'll yeah. still melt, but just not as quickly. It'll yeah, because exactly it's, like it's definitely colder, and you you will only find mini melts in the mini melts freezer. Yeah, so make sure you do it because it has to be kept super duper cold. All right, uh, mm -hmm. you know what? Let me do. We need a winner, right? Yeah. yeah. So we were looking for someone to identify uh, what movie this particular clip was from. Come on, seriously, you guys. The food here is really expensive. The soup is f***ing $10. Come on, let's go outside. I'll buy you a cup of coffee. All right, we're going to go to Dan, see if he knows. Hi, Dan. Good morning. Good morning, Nate. Uh, good morning to see you, Dan. What movie is that from? The Blues Brothers. Yes! Oh. Mr. Fabulous says it. All right. What do we have for him, uh, Case? We got a pair of tickets to see the Flyers battle the Devils on Saturday, the 17th at MetLife Stadium. This is the 2024 Navy Federal Credit Union NHL Stadium Series, and tickets are on sale now at Ticketmaster.com. By the way, Mr. Fabulous, uh, his real name is uh, Alan Rubin, and uh, I thought he had passed away, Nick. Is he still alive? No, he did. He passed away a decade ago, uh, uh, June of 2011. Um, great he, trumpet player. Yeah, I mean, he was. I mean, everybody in that band is such a phenomenal musician, including him. I told you guys not that long ago. I I took out the, the album Briefcase Full of Blues. Yeah, and I played along to dr drums. They have this amazing drummer named Steve Jordan. Yeah. He plays for the Stones now, and and I was just blown away at the musicianship by that band. I mean, you had Duck Dunn, you had Steve Cropper, you had. Uh, Matt Murphy, all these amazing, you know, and uh, Tom Bones Malone. Yeah, and also uh, Paul Schaefer Paul at the Schaefer. time was playing yeah. piano for Paul Schaefer put that band together. Incredible. So, Lulu. Uh, Blue Lou as well. Yeah. Lou Marini, yeah. Uh, so, anyhow, listen, we're done. We're done tasting the soups. Oh, oh, man. We now have to officially write down our scores and settle on it and submit them, and uh, then we have to get them told up, and we got to get a winner. So are you ranking them one to eight, Preston? Because that's what I was Yeah, doing. so eight, right. eight being your favorite. Favorite, yeah, okay. Because okay. we're going to do a point system okay. that, that way, way. And, uh, and we'll find out who our winner is. And I've been told that in our Acme Lounge... Our buddy Adam Ferrara has been sampling the soups. Nice. Oh, good. So we'll get his... Uh, we we'll might need a tiebreaker. His take on that <laughs> as well. I don't know if he's able to have all eight of them, but if he, if he tries all eight before the next break, he can vote. Maybe he has a tapeworm. Maybe that's... Yeah. Maybe we're lucky. Yeah. And he has one of those today. Huh. All right, let's take a break and come back in a moment and talk to Adam and then find out who our winner is of Soup Bowl 3. Stay with us. We'll be right back. <laughs> Back on 93.3 WMMR. All right, thanks, Kath. I'm hoping by the end of this segment, we will be able to reveal our winner of Super Bowl 2024. So we'll uh, we'll get to that in a tad. But, but we have been anticipating this day, not only for that, but because our good friend is in Philadelphia for shows at Helium Comedy Club. Always happen to, happy to welcome the one and only Mr. Adam Ferrar. Yay! How nice. I've come for the soup. Yeah. What a day. <laughs> we don't blame you. Stay yet. for the show. Stay for the come show. For the, yeah. Come for the soup. Stay for the show. Yeah, I walked in. I had I had four soups on the way in. Yeah. It was I didn't get the bread bowl though. Look at that. I'm getting six it. pounds looking at that. I know, I know, I know. yeah. But so good. So yeah. good. The matzo bowl soup was good. The uh the the, the poblano. Do you have the poblano? Yes. Yeah. That was it's the first time I ever had it. Meet my sinuses are open. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is great. Yeah, the yeah, lady yeah. gave me she went, I went, okay. <laughs> All right. And the crab bisque. And the gnocchi soup. Oh, uh, right. You, I had no idea you could put gnocchi, gnocchi in soup. Yeah. yeah. I thought that, you know, someone dropped something. No, they, they, <laughs> they just dropped it in. in the gnocchi chicken soup. So did it was you, really good. Did you grow up in a family of good home cooked meals? Yeah. Is your mom a cook? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Everyone's cooked. Because Every, you don't talk about your feelings in my family. <laughs> <laughs> you just cook. Mom, not happy. Yes, eat. <laughs> Shove it down. <laughs> so the food was really good. Yeah. <laughs> to compensate and for the agony. The guilt was exquisite. <laughs> 
but the food was good. And everyone would just eat. They just shove it in, and then one day it all comes up. Everyone burps up cheese and resentment. It's <laughs> Christmas dinner is just like that's just a nightmare. My mother would make a lasagna before the turkey. Oh my god! Wow! And everyone would just eat like they go into the chair. Did you they do the seven, <laughs> seven fishes? Seven fish? Like that's going to get him into heaven? Well, at least what these yeah. people have done. Dude, I, I had I had when I had my first full blown oh. Italian. Seven fishes. I mean, literally yeah. the soup to nuts, mm. everything. I'm yeah. like, this is this is an ungodly. This- Remember that guy Walter Hudson? They had to take yeah. that on a flatbread. They, yeah. That yeah. like I'm like, who Ungodly. eats like and this? And there's always smelts on the menu, and I've never had a smelt. No. I no. never, there were seven seven fishes and and one one my mother would because I like linguine and white clam sauce mm-hmm. uh, so she would make the clams and put the linguine in there because there's not enough calories put <laughs> pasta in there. It makes and sense. then we would all eat the seven fish and everyone would go downstairs and pass out in front of the TV <laughs> it looked like Jonestown after the food <laughs> <laughs> there's bodies all over the basement yeah. and as soon as you turn the TV off an uncle's head will pop up like I'm watching that <laughs> go right back down again <laughs> we, then after that. My cousins go out, would get high, come back, and think nobody knows. Yeah, yeah. Going for a walk? It, you just yeah. described me, like our family. Like, yeah. It's- they come back in there, they're stoned out of their heads. Like, Can you put some gravy on the cheesecake? Yeah, right. like, we know what you did. Yeah. <laughs> we one time had a, a huge oh, meal at the house, and one of the kids, you know, that, that's always the thing where after the meal, everybody's like, oh, I feel, oh, yeah. I'm hot. One of the kids cranked the thermostat up to like 90. Oh, oh God. <laughs> I mean, we were literally seconds away from dying. Oh. And uh, yeah, it's one of those things. But yeah, that, that post meal coma. You just uh, lay down. Yeah. Yeah. You look great. You lost weight. Thank you. Yeah. Well, we were all trying to, you know, it's all part of the goal. Except to, for today. Yeah, today. <laughs> right. 20 soups. Yeah. But yeah, but yeah I, I told you I'm doing the little it, intermittent it, fasting. Is, is I did that in college. It was called being broke. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> but it works. You, yeah. Like, because I, I tried it too, but you, I didn't realize about the sugar because I, I would stop eating at eight. And then if I'm alive the next day, I'd have lunch. <laughs> so you'd stop eating. That was your metric. Yeah, 8 o'clock. All right, yeah. And is it 16 hours or 12 16 hours? 16 hours for, yeah. So 16 hours, so I stop eating. I don't eat past 8. Right. And then I don't I, I don't have anything. Uh, I, I usually eat around, uh, like a little snack around 1 o'clock. Okay. And then dinner. I couldn't wait that long. There's yeah. no way to, yeah. in the day to eat. Yes, I'm starving. And I hate black coffee, but you can't, if you have sugar, you throw it. Anything sugar, you throw it off. Yeah. So uh, that, then I just do the black because well, it puts you in ketosis. Right, right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's nice. Your body's feeding on itself. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I look good. I'll be dead in a I'm week. I'm literally but I eating look good. my own organs. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, Adam, we we started this whole thing, uh, the Super Bowl thing, because yes. uh, you know you can't say the words Super Bowl in conjunction with any type of promotional thing you do. It's illegal. They they will they will call you to task for it. We're kidding. So we came right. up with the name Super yeah. Bowl. I like decided it to uh, to kind of play around with that. Are you a Super Bowl watcher, even if you don't have a team oh, yeah. that you care about? Oh it's, yeah. Okay. Are you, I thought oh. you were more a baseball dude. Nah, I'm more football. More football. Okay. Yeah. If you want baseball's good. If you, I like, but you know what? Run with the bat. That'll make. <laughs> <laughs> You're out. I don't think so. <laughs> uh, so you'll be back. You'll, your gigs are tonight and tomorrow. So you got Sunday free, obviously. Yes. Yeah, where, where are you going to go for the game? I'm probably going to go down to. I'm going back to New York, so I'll probably go down to Comedy Cellar. Oh, uh, and I'll sit there and watch so, it. The so Comedy is Cellar. the Comedy Cellar up in New York the the next is now in Caroline's was always re- yeah Caroline's re- gone now so yeah yeah the Comedy, so, but it was always the cellar it's always like, you'd always see guys because what happened was uh, Caroline's was a headline room right so if you were headlining. You know, once once you once you become a headline, you don't see your friends anymore because we're all different You're places. You're working. Yeah. Comedy sells all spots, so everyone's everyone's Everyone It's so insane. Everybody sees everybody. I, I went and saw a concert in at Madison Square Garden mm-hmm. at the end of December, and afterwards, you know, concert lets out at like eleven, eleven thirty. Sure. And we, <laughs> unfortunately, we're all old, and we were like, let's go to bed. But we were looking at the lineup at the Comedy Cellar. Yeah. And it was just headliner after headliner, and I, I just. First of all, as a as a spectator, mm. that's awesome. Yeah. As a comedian, I mean, is that intimidating or how, how does that work for you? You throw guys? smoke. You bring your fastball. Yeah. You know? yeah. And, and I, when I started there, there was there was just the McDougal room, and now there's four stages. So, yeah. So you know, it's great just to see everybody. And it brings more people in, and yeah, you gotta you gotta you gotta bring your A game. Yeah. Baby. All right. As a, as a spectator, did you guys go? Was it no, hard no. to get in? Can you get tickets? We, when do you get tickets? So you can, we could have bought tickets right there online, um, mm-hmm. and 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 gone in, but we. We are all over 45. We I was were just like, wondering it's, if it's hard to get a ticket. You know what? I don't last know. Last minute. Mm-hmm. I, I Is it no hard idea. to get? I, I, 
I've never had to do that. I know. <laughs> you're, you're I don't know. Yeah. You're yeah. you you're coming in from the other side of the stage. Yeah, I, I will tell you this: the place is always packed, and yeah. it's a, it's a lot of fun. Well, it, they it, don't have the soup you guys do. <laughs> That's what distinguishes. I it. mean, there's a borscht and a lentil, <laughs> but not yeah. like this. So I'm taking my son and I are just going on a, 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 a getaway just to spend some time with him. We're going to go to Chicago because I just picked a city that, nice. that I know has lots of culture and cool stuff there, and I wanted to maybe go do some comedy while I was there, mm -hmm. but. The only place I could find was really Second City. Or, Second or the, City is uh, the Improv in Schaumburg. I play that every year. That's a great in great Schaumburg. Year. Schaumburg. It's in the suburbs. Okay. Um, uh, I think Zanies. I don't think that's Zanies. Second City's okay. around the corner. But everybody, you know, uh, all your recommendations are go to Second City if you've never done that before. Mm, and I so. think you'd love it. I, okay. I really do. I did stand up there once. They did stand up there for a little while. And okay. Then they stopped doing. Did that. you? Because yeah. uh, I, I remember and I, we talked about this. Yeah. I, I, I was. There was a, you were a comedy competition years ago, Comac, Long Island. Yeah. And I knew right then and there. I said, we were a hundred years ago. Yeah, yeah hundred years ago. But I don't, I don't ever remember you doing anything really improv based. Did you do any improv? Groups? I did. What, what happened was me and Kevin James were sharing an apartment together. Right. And we were doing the colleges and we didn't have enough stand up time to do a whole show. So he would do whatever stand up he has. I'd do whatever stand up I had. And then we would play the improv games because we needed to fill time. Right. So right. we used to do that. Uh, I was in an improv group with Rob Bartlett. Uh, Rob Bartlett. Remember Rob? He, he did the uh, the football player yeah. with the balloons. No, that's, that's Bob Nelson. Oh, Rob, Rob Bartlett, Bartlett was, was uh, Imus. Imus, yeah. yeah. So he had an improv group in Queens, and then there was another improv group out on Long Island. So we played the games, but it wasn't like, you know, it wasn't Second City. It wasn't just straight. You it know, seems like so. you would be perfect yeah. for that. Yeah, it's For fun. the improv side. Well, you do. Plus, plus, you don't have to write. That's <laughs> nice. <laughs> I can sit around and eat soup all day. <laughs> but the big secret, and this is the truth, and I was in uh, improv, you... Yes. Um, Around that time, like people like Peter Bales and Jerry yeah. Paul and all Dave those Hawthorne. Dave Hawthorne. So all these guys. Um, the trick is also a lot of times audiences tend to yell out the same thing. The same thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so you already give me a proctologist <laughs> at the beach. <laughs> all right, here we go. You know the old joke is let's do improv. I got a lot of great stuff I've written for it. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. It's yeah, unless true. you unless you're a purist and you just throw yourself into the void. You right, know? right. Yeah, yeah it's wow. very cool. Yeah, yeah, but it's fun. So do we? What are we doing for the winner of the soups? Well, uh, How does it's, this work? it's an honorary title. Uh, got it. Just a, uh, there's no big prize. Other you don't than get like the golden spoon. It's bragging rights. If, unfortunately. if we had enough. If, if we, we, you know what, we only knew this was coming up for about a month. So, okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, in, in years past, and we were reminded of this morning, we made uh, bread bowl helmets in honor <laughs> That's of good. the Super Bowl, but the, apparently it was too tough to find a good sized one that would fit me. I can't it's impossible. Eat bread, for the sugar bread. And my wife, first of all, my wife, she's holistic or oh, wow. homeopathic, homeopathic, yeah. psychopathic, psychopathic, whatever the hell yeah. she is. <laughs> there's, there's all kinds of stuff I had no idea. I, did I tell you the probiotic diet? Did you do so did you have you have gut issues? It, it's well they, yeah. I didn't know fermented foods are good for us, right? right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I eat raw sauerkraut because it puts the good bugs in your system. Wow. What they don't tell you is there's a German umpa band in my lower intestine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. And the tuba Without likes question. to solo. <laughs> so <laughs> and I was on a plane. Oh. So I was like oh, no. this Exactly. Is, yeah. yeah. Your first time trying? No, well, I did. I did it, and I realized I didn't realize this. This you have to you have to allow a little time for this to for oh, the traffic to get through the business section man. of town, down downtown Berlin. <laughs> yeah, it, this was this was like the boats are coming in. Like, <laughs> oh God, I'm in the shipping lanes. <laughs> So yeah, so my wife gives me all that that stuff. So bread though, bread. No, I, I can't. I, I don't care what. I don't care. Bread will always. Be, I go to restaurants exclusively oh, for the bread. Warm hot bread with a little yeah. olive oil. Yes, uh, forget it. I gained six pounds in this sentence. Are you kidding me? <laughs> so you can't have it. I can. I can have. I come from fat people, Preston. Yeah. I can't if I have it. You know. Yeah, yeah. It's just yeah. gonna happen. I, I look like this face in a planet. I look like the man because <laughs> I gain it all in my face. Yeah. But you, you've always you've always been in good shape. I've, Trying I've, all to. The, for years. Right? When I get fat, my mole gets bigger like a <laughs> ring ding. <laughs> like a ring ding. It looks like a ring ding. Uh. This is when I know I'm really fat. When I'm on the phone and my fat cheek mutes my iPhone. That's when I know. <laughs> Yeah. Do you Hello? Know? Hello? <laughs> you Son wanna, of a bitch. Do you want to know when you're really, really fat? I yeah. apologize for interrupting because you had said ring ding is when you actually do a blind 
taste test between ring dings and ding dongs to see which one you like better. Because really? I, I did that on my own. Well, okay, so what, <laughs> what was it? The show? It was not on the show. No. What did you conclude? <laughs> ring dings are far superior than ding dongs. I agree. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. I agree. <laughs> ring dings. Are, so this is so this kind of source segment that we do. <laughs> we, we long ago determined uh. that uh, th- there is such a common. They say death and taxes. Yes. But junk food also. Oh like, yeah. There and and that kind of comfort food. What's and, yours? My my kryptonite chocolate chip cookies. Okay, what's yours? Ice cream. Uh, yeah. Ring dings. Uh, uh, food. <laughs> <laughs> food. Uh, yeah. Sweet food. Anything chocolate. Yeah. All foods. <laughs> I got white cheddar popcorn. White oh. cheddar. Yeah. Which which brand? Do you go smart food? I go or? smart food, but then you got to buy the wipes, otherwise you because I, I eat it in the car because I have guilt. Yeah. yeah. I, between Catholicism <laughs> and my fat family, I can't enjoy anything. So I I eat it in the car and I got to get the wipes because it's a steering wheel. Yeah. <laughs> And then I come home, and my dogs come running up to me, and my wife would, did you have white cheddar popcorn? And no, why? Because the dogs are licking my pants because oh of the salt on my pants. <laughs> and, oh, my dogs love me. They don't love you, you fat bastard. <laughs> so, yeah. Well, that white actually, of all of them, you probably pop. have the healthiest choice. You're eating the Smart mm. Pop. The Smart Pop, and there's another one called uh, um, uh, Small Batch. It's a craft kind ah. of, thing. yeah. It's, 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 it's $8 for yeah. half a bag. I was like, all right. Yeah. So, but yeah, I don't. It's worth it though. That, and they got a mix. They got the white cheddar and the caramel mix. You know, I've never been a white cheddar dude. My, my, no? I'm a purist. I'm a regular popcorn, uh, and then I, but, but kettle corn. Yeah, fresh kettle corn. Hang on, case you, you were commenting on the on the the price and it being worth it, but I got to call you out because Dots, Dots pretzels, pretzels, man, you I refuse know. to buy those because they're too expensive. So I, I need phenomenal, by the way. Which I need one? to Dots, 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 Dots pretzels. Yeah. yeah, oh, they're excellent. I need to walk back my statement. It is not worth it, but uh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> is it, is it just, just pretzels to agree with or, or is it peanut butter and pretzels? No, it's just pretzels, but they <laughs> are they are seasoned with su- with a. Yeah. There's two different flavors that I really like, but whatever seasoning it is, just. Mwah. Morphine. Fantastic. It's morphine. Yeah. 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 I mean, but, but, but pretzels, I didn't know idea I like pretzels and peanut butter. Now that I know, I'm like, oh, God. <laughs> yeah. You know what I've been doing lately? Do, do you know the, the pretzel thins? Yes. Those little things? Spread a little peanut butter on each one of those. Oh. Makes a great little. You're a chef. Snack. Yeah. Yeah. Here's what I do is when I go to Whole Foods, I'll yeah. go to the bulk items and I'll just, you know, little chocolate almonds. I go, you're going to charge me how much for sauerkraut? I'm going to take a little bit of these. <laughs> <laughs> just a little bit of these. I got caught. You got caught. I got caught. Food, food lifting? I, I got, okay, so you go to Whole Foods, right? Yeah. It was in Chicago. Yeah. Right? I, was, I was at the Improv. Right. So I go to Whole Foods, I do my thing, I think a little something, and I go, yeah, a little something for the effort. Let me wet my bake a little bit so I feel better. <laughs> Walking around, eating the, the pretzel, and there's a guy tracking me, and I know when someone's tracking me right. because that's the way I grew up. Yeah. You know, that's why <laughs> Italians don't watch Big Brother. We don't find surveillance entertainment. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. I know when someone's watching me, uh, right? Yeah. So I'm like, ah, he's got me. I got to come up with something. So I go to check. He's standing right there, and he's angry. This is like, you know, I guess he's the bulk item cop. He's right, like, I got one. <laughs> right, so I'm walking around, checking out. He's waiting for me to check out because he can't do anything until I leave, and I didn't pay for anything. So <laughs> I looked at, at the at the lady at the checkout counter. I said, "I am so sorry. I'm hypoglycemic. My blood sugar was crashing. I had to take something because I didn't want to faint." Here's ten dollars. <laughs> oh, thank you so much. And the, you could see the guy's face. He was just oh. like, "Ah, smooth Damn move, it. foiled again." Yeah. So <laughs> where do you where do you stand in general? This is a conversation that's come up before. What? Can you, if you are shopping in a market, yes. can you begin eating the food until you've technically purchased it? If there, it's in a wrapper and it has a, a QR code you can check out and go, I, I ate them, but I'm going to pay for it now. Well, what's the problem? The, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Right. the thing I take, there's nothing in there because it goes by weight and I just put it in a plastic bag and... You know, okay. and, and the other thing is, if I'm eating chocolate covered raisins, the calories don't count. I didn't buy this. <laughs> you didn't right. buy it. Yeah. It I never existed. It. it never existed. <laughs> yeah. No. The guilt of stealing burns those calories. Is oh, what the happens. guilt. Oh, yeah. You have no idea. <laughs> because, again, Catholic, he's dead, your fault. Great. <laughs> <laughs> That's where I'm starting. <laughs> uh, even, like, even like my father. My father was just like, you know. Oh. He was he was he was a pragmatist. We raised Catholics as a pragmatist. He said, "Listen, right. you, you've been baptized. You made your communion. You made your confirmation. All your paperwork's done. Right, right, right. You can get into heaven. If you want to go to church, you're going to go with your mother. Right. I won't be there because <laughs> God is everywhere. So come Sunday, God and I are going to be watching football, going peace. <laughs> so you got to go. You got to go to make your. Uh, you got to go to confession before you can get confirmed to your confirmation. You have to. Yeah. And I'm in the truck. My father's in the in the truck. He's in a suit with his ruler right here because he's got to go to work after this. Yeah. Yeah. So he's sitting, he goes, listen, you go to confession, you confess your sins for, you, for God, you know, you can't lie to God, but 
Don't say nothing about nothing. <laughs> <laughs> what? Nothing about nothing. He's like, just, just, just say enough to get through this. Just, don't, don't. <laughs> I go, what? He goes, it's a confession. He's a priest. He goes, yeah, I don't trust him. Just go. <laughs> I don't trust him. Just give him something to go with and give him enough. Just I give him enough. God loves you and so do I. All right. Yeah, All right. it's so true because my, my brother actually <laughs> goes to a church, and this is the coolest thing. They do sort of a group confession at the beginning of like mass, or it's like it's like everyone gets it at like at once. What you don't have to spell out your your yeah, exactly your, what, what, you did. what you're charged with, <laughs> and you're golden. I'm like, how hold do you work it, that hold deal? It. It's yeah, just a bunch of bunch of guys. Go, I touched it. <laughs> no, <laughs> they, they just you in your mind hold your sins, and then the priest will absolve them remotely from the front of the other uh, church. What? Okay, yeah. so this is like a Zoom church you're going to? <laughs> no, no, it's like a regular church, but I've never heard of that methodology. No. Because part of the deal was you had to go into the confessional. Yeah. You had to, forgive me, Father, if I've seen you, have to lay them out. And and um, I, I remember sometimes I had I would receive without having gone to confession. Oh. And I'm like, I'm just, I'm just piling on my charges here. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I was always scared of confession because I f- always would forget the order of the prayer and the this yeah. and the that. And I'm like, I don't know, the priest is going to get mad. So I just... Yeah. Yeah, it was, it's intimidating. Oh, my God. Yeah. Really you, didn't, you had the booth? We didn't have the booth. This guy's looking at me oh, like, yeah. what'd you do? <laughs> no. <laughs> what'd you, you did so. I can see it on your face. <laughs> God's everywhere. He was in that room. <laughs> we, we had the screen, so you could choose. It was up to mm-hmm. us whether oh. or not we wanted to see the priest or not. But then if you didn't pull it over, he would be like, do you want to leave the screen closed? No, I'm like, well, yeah, no. I didn't pull it over. We were looking through a, a very tightly laced lattice, and you could sort of see the silhouette of the priest. That's all you saw. Oh, that's yeah, yeah. I was sitting right in a room looking at this guy. <laughs> not being Catholic, this stuff is all a mystery to me. And Kathy sent me this story the other day about um, Ash Wednesday. And apparently, mm-hmm. and I didn't know this, you fast on Ash Wednesday? Right. Okay, and so people are curious because it falls on uh, Valentine's Day. And so a lot of people go out to dinner. Mm -hmm. They have, you know, chocolates and things like that. Uh, The Archdiocese of Philadelphia has released a statement. Ash Wednesday is one of the most solemn days on the Christian calendar, and no exemptions are being oh, granted. Wow. Right. Yeah, but if it was St. Patty's Day, they'd be like, no drink problem. up, Johnny. <laughs> yeah. You're fine. No eat, problem. Eat. Yeah. It's like that George Carlin, George Carlin, but except for uh, uh, our, our, our parish, who was number one on the paper drive. Right. Yeah. <laughs> they just dispense with all the, uh, right. the, the stuff arbitrarily. So sorry to break the bad news. No oh, man, so you're not Catholic. What did you, we, Preston? What did you grow up? What were you, how were you? How were you, how were you abused? <laughs> Wait, yeah, yeah. What was I forced to believe? Um, uh, Methodist, but it Methodist. was half-assed at most. That's so like, was it like menthol Catholic, <laughs> like wintergreen Catholicism? Yeah. <laughs> My father made the easiest conversion in the world. He was Presbyterian and became Roman Catholic, which is just a notch on the. Uh, yeah, yeah. We're, yeah, yeah. Methodists aren't anywhere yeah, near yeah, that. So we, was, we had uh, yeah. we we did um, communion once a year. That was and, it at uh, around Easter. And then okay. there was a point in time which we became 17-foot boat, uh, and then that became the religion on Sunday. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Good religion. I, I, I kid my you cousin, not. My cousin's wife is born again. Yeah. I, I'm pretty annoyed it happened the first time. I got to be honest with you. <laughs> <laughs> That's just, what a pain. What's that Adam, like? have you ever been? To, oh, sorry. Well, go, go ahead. ahead. No, go ahead. No, have you ever been to a Greek church? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So my sister in law is Greek. So every time we, you know, get invited, like it was the that's wedding. Orthodox. Yeah. yeah. yeah that's the, hardcore. It's it, they do Kathy, everything three times. And yeah, listen, the I incense. Know, how could you handle uh, that? And but every time we're there, we're like, here we go. One, two, yeah. three. That and then you know the next what whatever, whatever ritual yeah. it is. I mean, their their masses are over an hour. The baby getting baptized. She was. Scr- I had. To, I was the godmother. Mm. I'm holding her. They literally put an entire bottle of olive oil on her. So now I'm like, well, I guess what I don't care hell? about They're my outfit. Her. Whatever. Yeah. She's screaming. Yeah. She's then, naked in this bath thing. And it was. We had to do it three times. I'm like, can we wrap this up? Kathy, yeah. I went to the to the Greek. Uh, Greek. My neighbors were Greek, and we would sometimes go to their Saint Paraskevi, and we'd go to the to the church. And I remember as a kid, I went to one of the services, and they. You would drink wine. Yeah, you got to drink uh, the yeah. wine, and like I'm, I'm like looking like uh, the the pro, like uh, okay? you, you know like the untouchables are going to break in with yeah. the axe. And then they have a like a basement in their church, so after the mass, like after whatever we're there for, they all go downstairs and drink that whatever that Greek shot is that Uzo. is Uzo. Uzo. Oh my god, and it is not <laughs> delicious yeah. at all. And they all sit down there and drink it. And, I mean, listen, it's it's a cool community. But yeah, oh, it the is absolutely. Yeah. I got all the restaurant people are like, it's Uzo. Uzo. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. So I walk in Queens. Is a big story. Queens is all all Greeks. Yes. Right? So I, I go to a movie during the day. I come out. It's Greek 
like Easter. Everyone's walking the streets with candles like a Frankenstein movie. I was like, they, they're going to burn the monster. I have no idea what this is because I didn't know what it was. Yeah. And the Greek, the Russian Orthodox or Greek, Orthodox, they don't have seats. You're standing what? alone. Yeah. Yeah, you stand up. There's no pews. You're standing up for two and a half hours. We used to do, so when we first when we first started going to church, they were build, it was St. Anthony and they were building the actual church. We would actually, were actually having mass in the basketball court mm -hmm. of the of the school and it was a latin mass standing oh. and it was like I, you know preston i felt like when when they when uh, steve mcqueen and dustin hoffman arrive on the french guiana during yeah, Tapia, yeah, yeah. and they're standing out there in the sun i mean people were passing out yeah it was just, <laughs> yeah, exactly and the priest would never face the parishioners, the whole deal was the priest would always face the altar, would never face you. Yeah, well, the, the Orthodox ones, they come out of doors. It's like laughing. Yeah, they come yeah. in and out of doors. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They're just popping out. Who loves you? Who loves you? <laughs> was that Joanne <laughs> really talking to me? Yeah. Goldie <laughs> Hawn showing up? Yeah. <laughs> That'd be great. Yeah. Is that Alan Seuss? <laughs> yeah. Look at that. Very interesting, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's great. Oh, my God. Well, here's the other thing about forgiveness, because that's the whole thing. About yeah. yeah. And that's what... And, I, my therapist says I have to forgive myself because I beat myself up for everything. Right. And I'm like, culturally, I have, I'm Italian. We don't hold grudges. We carry out vendettas. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. 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 My mother has our family motto embroidered on a pillow. It says, death doesn't mean it's over. <laughs> wow. Yeah. They don't let go of it. You know the cemetery the outside the Midtown Tunnel? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Queens? Oh, God, yeah. Tony, when I was a kid, every time we passed that cemetery, he would roll down the window with a truck and yell, out, you're not dead enough, <laughs> <laughs> and nobody knows who he's talking. Oh my god! <laughs> so that is a classic. That cemetery has appeared in countless movies. Yeah. Uh, wow. and, and in fact, I think that's where the Godfather, right? Is that where they shoot? Cavalry Cemetery. Was that the Godfather? Yeah, yeah, cemetery? yeah. So, so let me ask you, mm -hmm. and, and you, you obviously you talk about the Italian heritage and all stuff, yeah. and everyone connects with what you're saying. Uh, and, and mob movies. What mob movie to you feels like the like the the be, the most accurate? The Goodfellas most was the was the era when I grew up and I saw that Cadillac. Right. I saw those guys. Okay. I saw that hair. It I feels saw those the most cyber. real. Yeah. Yeah. That's the real one. Um, but the and and the Godfather was just that's my grandfather. That's the, that kind of that yeah. rich filmy kind of. Yeah. That's the way my memories burned into. But one of the ones I really loved was, and it wasn't I, it was the Untouchables. Remember? Yeah. Sure. Mm -hmm. Sean, uh, 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 De Niro. Uh, no, no, the, Sean Connery, Sean Kevin and Costner, and Kevin, yeah, Kevin Costner. Costner yeah. that when he was the cop, when he's like, because when I was a kid, all those those guys were real to me. Yeah, that's right. why we left Queens. My father said, "We'll we'll leave in Queens." And why? Because mm, mm. <laughs> just so you need. <laughs> <laughs> you know, my, my, my uncle, my uncle, we'd call my uncle's friend. He would come around the corner. He would flying around the corner in a Buick, <laughs> and there was a busted pool cue <laughs> with like uh, blood on the end yeah. of it, throwing it out the window with a car. And I was like, game's over! <laughs> Just running out. Hey, hey, you work with Chaz Palm and Terry, uh, the, the uh, Bronx Tale? Bronx no, Tale. I haven't. I haven't, I haven't, I haven't I, we've had him on the show a couple of times. That movie is yeah. sensational. I mean, yeah. that that is such, I think that you'd Lo probably... You want to be loved or feared. Yes, that question, yeah, that, that moral question. Yeah, and it's just a, it's just fantastic. Adam, you referred to your uncle, and I'm assuming that wasn't actually an uncle. It was just a, somebody called an uncle. Yeah, there was always those, those <laughs> right relatives. <laughs> Did you have cousins that weren't cousins as well? Yeah. Okay, everyone's. Yeah. Here's why I bring it up. I, m one of my best friends, Chris Cornaccio, growing up. At one point, we did, we Chris found Cornaccio. Out, Chris Cornaccio. Yeah, Jewish. Yeah, <laughs> <Not> Jewish <laughs> man. Yeah. Uh, South Philly Italian. Mm -hmm. Chris, uh, we find out is dating his cousin, and we're like, wait, what? He was like, Jerry Lee Lewis? <laughs> <laughs> no, it wasn't his cousin at all. It was just somebody that like was a friend of the family. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then when they were kids, they referred to as cousins. And then when they were teenagers, Ooh, they ended up hooking that. up. And I was well, I know, right? <laughs> we were all a bunch of, you know, mainline wasps, and yeah, we're like, what yeah. the hell are you talking about? It turns out it wasn't a blood rel relative yeah. at all. <laughs> we, we, it's a tradition in the Italian culture because, you know, like, well, you can't testify to family. What are you, an animal? <laughs> <laughs> I had a few grandfathers. I've told these guys what? this yeah. story before. Yeah. And, uh, oh, there's a one great them, story, yeah. There, there was a, when my aunt was younger, there was a little girl at school teasing her. And mm -hmm. so my grandfather picked the girl that was bullying my aunt up right. and put her in the trunk of his car and drove around and then dropped her back off at school and told her to never tease his daughter again. Oh my God, that's yeah. that's beautiful. Yeah. So, so I so Philly Mafia and if you saw the Irishman, which yeah. is kind of and that, that was lot, like my era was Nicky Scarf was like the end of Nicky Scarf. Sure, and I so I remember all. So the, if you watch the uh, the offer, which was the series based on the making yeah, of yeah, the Godfather. Yeah, yeah. 
I was acutely aware of all that as it was going on, and the uh, the Italian Anti Defamation League and all that mm-hmm. stuff that was going on, and and uh, yeah, but it's something that perpetually fascinates us. Yeah, and yet you know it it, it like it. it, it it's obviously repugnant, but there's a certain bizarre. Oh, there's a charm, charm. a charm yeah. to, to, to those characters. Well, so you, you and Edie Falco were really good friends because of Nurse yeah. Jackie. Like, yeah. what were her impressions of The Sopranos? Because from my perspective, it seemed very realistic, and and like th- those people were real. You know, yeah. Tony and, and Carmela were actually real people, but then and that's how it was. It was written so damn well. What was her perspective? My on perspective it? was it, it was like home movies. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> We never really talked about. It. We, I mean, Edie grew up on Long Island like I did, so we we had a shared kind of experience. You know, we drink, when you drink water from the sea, like me and you. Well, yeah, I, what, we what, what, what town? What town? We... She was in Northport. I was in Huntington. Okay, so I was East Northport. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, but she never really, you know, she didn't talk about it. We we really didn't talk about. it. We talked about the show we were on, you know, her kids and everything, but we never really. It was Nurse Jackie, by the way. Reviewed everything. Yeah, 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 we yeah. never really reviewed um, of the surprise. My mother went nuts as soon as I got that job. <laughs> out of all the stuff I've done. <laughs> My mother, yes, yes, we're very proud. As soon as I got <laughs> Nurse Jackie, oh, my son is working with Edie Soprano. <laughs> <laughs> she was the queen of the day room in her community. <laughs> they, I was getting questions. Like, you guys get questions from, from callers yeah, and stuff? Yeah, That's yeah. what I was getting. <laughs> Sophia wants to know if she got to keep the jewelry. <laughs> 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 That's hilarious. I tell you the story when, about when Edie was on the Tonight Show. No. All right, so I get the gig, right? And she, Edie's doing the Tonight Show, and I'm doing it a week later. And she mentions my name on the Tonight yeah. Show. So all my mother's all proud. Everyone's <laughs> watching her. And she's got two kids. So my, my, my father passed away. My mother, she, to process grief, she knits. Yeah. My father's been gone since 2006. <laughs> I have more Afghans than Kabul. <laughs> <laughs> she's still in a black dress knitting. Yeah. So she sees the tonight. She and Edie says she's got two kids. She's like, I'm gonna make the kids winter hats because she's a single mother. She's working. When does she have time to knit? I'm like, I don't know, Mom. <laughs> so she she's making these winter hats for the two kids. Yeah. She goes, I want you to give these to Edie Soprano. When she sends me the hats. <laughs> Edie Soprano. They're awful. They the, the brim is over here. Oh, no. One, they look like little elephant man hats. They're just yeah. like right. It, it, it looks like it, it looks like Fred Flintstone's bowling ball bag. Dude, I got to put those kids there. So I got these these deformed Chernobyl hats. I got to bring them in. <laughs> I said, Edie, look, my mother, she goes, oh, my God, that's so sweet. What's her address? She sends her a note oh, and wow. a card, oh my and my mother flips out. <laughs> wow. Flips out. Yeah. She goes, let me tell you what a lady Edie Soprano is. <laughs> <laughs> she didn't text nobody. She didn't send no email. She bought a card. She licked a stamp, and she sent a letter to another person with a note. I go, what'd you do with the note? I made a copy of it for my bag, and the original I had laminated. <laughs> <laughs> it's in the curio next to the dishes and the picture is Sinatra. Oh, oh beautiful. That's amazing. Yeah. That brings back so much. The, the oh, memories. The I, we, we all grew up with people like, yeah. 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 We're, I, we're Irish, but all my friends were Italian. Same, same thing. Right. I, I have to break in here. I am sorry to oh, interrupt, oh. Adam, yeah. but uh, we now have the results in oh. the Super Bowl. So we Price, need Price Waterhouse. to make this announcement. <laughs> and I have been told that we didn't know this, but per Adam's question, we do have an award. It is the Silver Ladle, oh. <laughs> which is not made out of silver at all. How much did we spend on that, Preston? I'm, I'm not at liberty to say. No, no we, we don't want to brag. But our winner is going to receive the, the, the Ladle Award. Uh, so we have the top three. Do uh, you want me to just dive right in and give you the winner? Just jump in and say something that is not really just a, a rote assessment here. These were sensational yes. soups. Yeah. Sensational, yes. all of them. And listen, and and while comparing, like with Casey over here, like my favorite was his least favorite. Yeah. Ooh. So it's all subjective. And, and I'm glad we had this many judges to be a part all of it right. so we could get a variety of tastes and flavors. Dude, right. look at the paparazzi in this studio. I, yeah. Everybody, everybody so just excited. stood up and they all yeah. Every yeah. phone yeah. is just like, look at yeah. this. like, oh, all right. Is it ring dings? <laughs> ring dings and ding dongs. What are we doing? The win. Winner of the Preston and Steve Soup Bowl, number three for 2024, is the Piston Diner Whoa! with the cream of potato leek soup, ladies wow. and gentlemen. Yeah, the, the Piston wow. Diner wins. Oh, and shakes all around. Wow. I'm surprised. I, I am, and uh, and I am very, very happy. Uh, Ish, how you doing, man? Good, man. Good, good. Congratulations. Yeah, Thank you so much. Uh, yeah. Did you ever have a doubt, or were you? What, did you think you were coming in here a sure winner? 
I thought I'm gonna be the the number one. Yeah. 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 Confidence. And and even even uh, and it was after the voting was in. Right. He brought over the bread bowl. Yeah. Uh, filled with the potato leaks. Right. So, so it, was it wasn't like we got bribed or right, anything right. like that. Uh, well, congratulations. Thank to you so you. much. We are going to award you yeah. uh, the special. <laughs> <laughs> Special ladle here. Sure. So I'm that, by the way, is... That is I'm going to hang this on my wall. <laughs> yes. Uh-huh. It's made by <laughs> Tiffany. Yeah. 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 We a girl it. we know. Yes. Okay. We Tiffany. 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 She's a stripper. Yeah. yeah. A cheerleader. And her Actually. dancing name is Potato Lee. <laughs> <laughs> She's, she's a squirter. Yes. Yeah. Well done, Adam. <laughs> oh my God. Uh, is there anything you'd like to any, anything one you'd like to, to thank or? I want to thank everybody. You guys are awesome. Yeah. And I really joined that. Good. Good experience. Yeah. Good experience. Good experience. Like and it. there it is. All right. Thank you. Ish. Congratulations, thank you Ishmael. Much. Thank you. And uh, Renee and uh, the company oh. from uh, Piston Diner in Westville, New Jersey. Marissa yes. actually went above and beyond and made like framed um, whatever. Oh, one. we do have plaques. Yeah. Oh, that's plaques cool. for everybody. So, I mean, move over, Philly Mag. These are now going to be hanging in at restaurants <laughs> all over the Delaware Valley. Yeah. You just have to pay us for them. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> okay. So, uh, I'm going to tell you second and third. I'm not going to go okay. through the whole okay. list. All right. but I, second, second. Second place is who I picked for first and Mick picked for first. Uh, the truffled five onion soup from Metropolitan mm. Diner. Yeah. Truffle, truffle got a perfect just, score for me. Absolutely. Just amazing. But it had to go all the way across the board in order to win. And then we had a tie for third. And this was my second favorite one. The chicken gnocchi soup. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So yes. Good. From Westmont Diner. Sensational. And, and that tied with the wild mushroom lump crab soup from uh, Catherine's Restaurant yeah. in Kenneth Square. Yeah. So that, but I have to also, because I'm such a, a tomato soup uh, fan. Right. Same. That's that was yeah. so effing good. Well, yeah. they were all great. That was from Gas in Maine, yeah. by the way. So here's the deal. And what I was thinking about it is it really is kind of unfair. What we should do or what Category. should be done is, yes, there should be a clam chowder. Yeah. Good. There should be best tomato soup. There Good. should be, you know, all these uh, yeah. uh, more standard varieties and, and we should do that. But we wanted to encompass all soups and there are so many different kinds. Well, you know what the deal is also is, again, in support of all these wonderful restaurants that work against massive odds to get, you know, to stay in business. We're talking, uh, you know, business huh. been in, around for, for decades. Restaurant business You is can't believe the Herculean chore of having a successful business, sure. yeah. you know, and keeping family members employed, keeping the economy going, going through a pandemic, and then continuing to serve their uh, customers with this incredible Incredibly superior food that each of them offers. Yeah. So please frequent them. They're, they're going to be listed on PrestonSteve.com and uh, make them a spot you absolutely frequent. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you to all you guys for for literally and figuratively keeping us alive. Right. Yeah. Uh, it's just, I mean, we li live off of this stuff and we love it. And we have these influencers who are doing you know exactly what we all want to do. These are influencers. Yeah. Yes. These, are yeah all, these guys over they here. They look yep. like freaking bouncers. Yeah. I know. <laughs> right. <laughs> these are the influencers. Yeah. I want a woman in a bikini. Look at these guys. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, I want to point these, out these kind of influencers. Eat the soup. <laughs> Eat the soup. You're, you're thinking more of like a, an Instagram model. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Hector's hey going to kick your ass. Yeah. 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 By the way, I want to point out uh, so when Ishmael entered his uh, soup, we, we had asked the question online why should we choose your soup? Uh -huh. And he simply wrote, and everybody, the people wrote like paragraphs and yeah. stuff. Piss, uh, Ishmael just wrote, I am the king of soup. Yeah. <laughs> they are the place that has the soup flights, and I will be heading over there and right. uh, and and having dinner. Casey. And my dinner will only be soup. Is good soup. Is, is good, good soup. soup. Ten, soup. Ten, 10, 12 soup. <laughs> okay, is what I'm going to order. One of the other moves yeah. to do with, with if you have a place that has a like a, a buffet, like a like a Whole Foods or a yeah. Wegmans yeah. that has the buffet and a soup. Yeah. I get the big soup container. Yes, and I put the ch I put half the chicken from the from the buffet in the bottom, <laughs> and then I cover it up with chicken soup. <laughs> I go, you sons of bitches, I'm going to get my chicken more time. Brilliant. Yes. That's why your, your, your father tells you not to give up too much information yeah. in the confessional. Uh, uh, it's just us talking. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I do like the categories. You have the soup bowl and the matzo bowl. I, I, I yeah. do like the whole yeah, thing. Yeah, and matzo yeah. bowl was great. It was excellent. excellent. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. It was, it was the best matzo bowl soup I ever had. Yeah. Yeah. That was from uh, the kibitz. Yeah, yeah, the yeah. kibitz. I'm sorry, yeah. the kibitz. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it looks like Ish has uh, one more thing. Yeah, yeah Ish, go ahead, buddy. Yeah, You say you're going to stop by with your wife? Yes. And let me know. I'm going to give you a good looking guy this Okay. All right. Oh, good looking wow. guy. Wow. Discount. Wow. Discount. Look at you. <laughs> he's mm. that that is, he's gonna make me pay guy. double. <laughs> good looking guy. <laughs> discount. <laughs> <laughs> That's the best that compliment just, I've ever heard. That, that's loaded, though. Like, you yeah. want free soup? Touch it. <laughs> <laughs> Not yours, mine. Touch it. 
Wonderful. I don't know. I think I'm going to float on that for the rest of the week. Yeah. 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 Good All right. for you. Thanks, Guy who makes really good potato leek soup said I'm attractive. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> well, we are going to have to take a break, but ladies and gentlemen, uh, you do not want to pass by the opportunity to see Mr. Adam Ferrara, who is going to be at Helium Comedy Club at Who's better? And tomorrow night. Nobody's better. So Thank you, Barry. Yeah, He's the king definitely. of soup. Comedy. Yeah, that's <laughs> it. In fact, tonight he, you'll give a good-looking guy a discount. That's tonight? it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Come out, ladling out the laughs. Get in here. <laughs> it's great to see you. Thanks for being Thanks here. Thanks for buddy. having me, guys. Adam yeah. Ferrara. We'll take a break. We'll come back in a second. And the bizarre file is on the way next. Stay with us. Preston and Steve on 93.3 WM traffic on 93.3 WMMR. I would like to give this away right now. This is a really cool thing. Uh, it is a pair of tickets as Briganti Wines presents a VIP meet and greet with Real Housewives star Teresa Judice uh, tomorrow. Nice. And it's going to be at Sin Philadelphia in Northern Liberties. Uh, so if you are a Housewives fan or you're a fan of uh, Teresa's, you know, all her endeavors. Yes. Uh, we can set you up. We'll take the 18th caller at 215-263-WMMR and we will give you those passes. And keep in mind, it is tomorrow at Sin, Philadelphia in Northern Liberties. Uh, Briganti Wines is presenting this VIP meet and greet with Real Housewives star uh, Teresa Judice. So 215-263-WMMR cool. call right now. We'll do the B5 while you're calling. No. Bizarre. WMMR presents Bizarre. Kristen and Steve's Bizarre. Bizarre Final. All right, it's brought to you by Horizon Services. Horizon's licensed plumbers have a same-day 24-7 solution. Uh, plus, they're offering $50 off any repair. You can schedule your visit today at horizonservices.com forward slash WMMR. Uh, this is a pretty wild story. In the heart of a mid-January deep freeze, an eastern Indiana newspaper employee was determined to deliver her papers on time, and it turned out to be in the nick of time for a 94-year-old man who did the same job himself as a boy. So Heidi Lipscomb was filling in for a delivery driver whose car wouldn't start in the bitter cold. It was 2 degrees at 2 a.m. on Tuesday morning when she pulled into the driveway of Bill Denny's home to drop off the Richmond Palladium item and Indianapolis Star. She immediately noticed the garage door was open and the lights in the house were on. When Lipsom stepped from the car, she saw Denny lying on his back in front of the garage. He wore a brown down coat, boots, and a brown cap and was immobile except for slight movements of his arms. His eyes were open, but he couldn't speak. His hands were black and his knuckles were oozing blood. Wow. She said, I was shocked. I told him, I'm getting you some help. Paramedics, hey, buddy. <laughs> paramedics came in five minutes and rushed Denny to a nearby hospital. Uh, Lipscomb finished delivering the papers. Hours later, she checked into the hospital. Not only was Denny okay, but he could now see visitors. He had suffered frostbite on his hands, yeah. but otherwise he was in good condition. Another 30 minutes in the cold, probably would have died. I'm yeah. going to finish my route and I'm going to be right back. <laughs> Uh, she said, I couldn't believe it. All yeah, I if his hands are black, that's your, your way into frostbite. All I could think was, thank God he's alive. He must be one tough bird. And the least uh, she could do, she thought, was bring him his newspapers. He's been a subscriber for 60 years, after all. And when she walked into the hospital of room 508 and told Denny who she was, he and his visitors declared a mystery solved because they didn't know who helped Wow, him. God yeah. bless you. You really want to help a fellow out? Reach under the blanket. Shut up. <laughs> Denny said that he was returning home. My hands Again, don't can't work use them, and I, I love to pleasure myself. Well, you understand. Uh, Denny said he was returning home from dinner Monday when he lost his balance, hands fell over. frozen. I can't use them. Was knocked unconscious. He you had, can use your mouth. He, oh, my God. I'm just saying. Yeah. He had no recollection of lying in the cold or seeing Lipscomb come to help. Uh, he said, I must have hit my head, and when I woke up, I didn't know where I was. I'm very fortunate Heidi was there to get the ambulance called. I never had a close call like that, not even the war. You said. had to be seconds away from death. Yep, yeah. absolutely. In Massachusetts, police, a police detective, actually, I'm sorry, a police detective from Massachusetts uh, is on leave following his arrest for allegedly assaulting people during a disturbance at Disney World in Orlando. Why are you all so happy? Uh, detective Dwayne Danforth has been placed on paid administrative leave as a result of the incident in Florida. Prosecutors say Danforth was arrested after he allegedly assaulted security staffers and cast members at Walt Disney World's Epcot Park while trying to access a roped-off section of the park that he wasn't allowed to be in. Court documents say Danforth said, I'm going to effing kill you! 
while pushing a security team it's member away. Insane. Uh, he also allegedly struggled while being placed in handcuffs. He was uh, selected as the department's officer of the year in 2021. I take a flame through to this place. And was recognized for his ability to de-escalate situations. Well, that was obviously a different year. It was. Uh, yeah. Danforth will remain on uh, leave pending the outcome of an internal investigation. Or... Of- the incident. Is that perhaps the new way to de-escalate? Maybe By it making is. you the focus. All right, listen to this. Uh, Syed Amir Razavi came up with a unique method for marketing his services as either a cocaine dealer or a chauffeur in oh. Calgary, Canada. <laughs> All right. He reportedly uh, posted up outside of a casino and handed out his business card <laughs> with small baggies of blow stapled wow. to Wow. Genius. The car the card read Alex Lee, driver, and included his contact details. And I drive fast. While the name on the card was an alias, the other information enabled police to track him down and conduct surveillance for an entire month. After finally arresting Razavi, the cops found 59.6 grams of cocaine in 50 baggies, a scale, and more than $1,200 in cash. That's how you promote. He's charged with uh, two counts of trafficking a controlled substance. I know, I know. All right, here's here's another moron. Uh, Police in South Carolina tracked down a man who wore a ski mask and a camouflage vest with his name on it to kidnap his on-again, off-again girlfriend. Jimmy! (laughs) Says right there. Right on your coat. Jimmy! (laughs) And is that your business on the back? What the hell is that? (laughs) Jimmy! Says you're a coke addict limo driver. The sheriff's office responded to a domestic-related call Saturday to a home while en route. The caller said the victim had been taken against her will by 42-year-old Jimmy Perry. No, it's John. <laughs> oh, for this purpose, it's Jimmy. So, you know. Jimmy! Uh, Jimmy. Uh, the caller said uh, Perry no, no, that's not me. and the victim were last seen at a nearby gas station. Deputies couldn't find him. They searched a the vehicle in the woods behind, and then the vehicle, uh, and then the woods behind the gas station matched a description. Uh, they didn't find him, so they kept looking, and eventually he, they showed up at his home. Uh, I'm sorry, he showed up at the girl's home with a gun and demanded to know where the victim was. Uh, and he returned around 5 a.m., grabbed the victim who was outside and allegedly fled the scene with her. A short while later, deputies located the car not far from the victim's home. He has a sad mugshot. It was found stuck in the mud, and deputies found Perry and the victim nearby in a cemetery. They also found a gun with no magazine in the area, and neither Perry nor the victim were injured, but he had his name <laughs> on his vest, even Come though on. he was wearing a mask. Who the hell do you think you're talking to? <laughs> Jimmy. Jimmy. Yeah, <laughs> apparently. <laughs> All right, one last story, and then we will wrap it up. Let's end with this one. This took place in Pennsylvania, in Huntington County. A homeowner had a close call after a bear decided to take up residence under his porch. We've had a couple of these. Yeah, yeah. The homeowner needed to to get access to some pipes that had frozen and went in to crawl under their porch. And and as you can expect, they were very surprised to find a bear. Uh, What's that? My My name is Jimmy. Jimmy! Uh, The bear then ran off but found its way back to its den later the same day. They've had, yeah, so they've had a a couple of times a bear will set up a hibernation area under a porch. The PA Game Commission added that the bear was scared off the next day but then tried to make a den in a neighbor's carport. Uh, Wardens worked to relocate the bear to a more suitable area away from residential areas. They constructed an artificial den and lined it with a straw bedding material. Mm. Uh, after the den was uh, re- nice. ready for the bear, they immobilized the animal and transported it to a new home. Get a flat screen for the big game. Uh, the bear was uh, placed in the new den, which was then covered with brush and debris. It's to simulate natural. Even the bear thinks it's stupid. You can't say Super Bowl, right? Yeah, the big game. It's for goddamn ridiculous. All right, and there you go. That's what I have in the bizarre foul. All right, with that. Here's what I'd like to do. We have a little gathering next week. It's called mm-hmm. Galentine's Day Party. Uh, we and our sisters of Zeta Eta Pi. That's right. Are going to be joining. And we've got some great prizes to give away. But here's what I'd like to do. Three callers right now. First three callers. At least 21 years of age and able to join us at the casino at Rivers Casino next Tuesday starting at 6 o'clock. 6 to 8. It's kind of an early thing. It's a Tuesday. Listen, man, we're not going to stay out late. No. Uh, 215-263-WMMR. But we have the bracelet making with... Uh, 
uh, Marinella Jewelry Delco. Ooh. Just to uh, clarify, it's Marinella Jewelry. So if you're looking for her on Instagram or on the website, it's Marinella. It's supposed to be Marinella Jewelry Delco. Oh, see, and everything I have written down yeah. says Marinella Jewelry Delco. No, it's just Marinella Jewelry. Okay, all right. So uh, this is going to be next Tuesday. If you can go, 215-263-WMMR. We're going to be at Jack's Bar and Grill in Rivers Casino, and we have a bunch of prizes to give away while we're there and an activity, and it'll be a damn good time. All right, it's the night before uh, Thanksgiving. No, <laughs> Valentine's Day. I mean, it's, it is before Thanksgiving. <laughs> Not the night before. It's a night before Thanksgiving. It's a night before Thanksgiving. <laughs> yeah. You are correct. All right. All right, we'll break. Come back in a second. Lesson, question, trash, and music news are on the way. WVH, another great song. I'm all right. I'm 93.3 WNMR. It's everything that rocks. 1024, the Preston and Steve show. Uh, today has been a bunch of fun, and we still yeah. have a lot left to go before we wrap. Uh, we have a few things to give away, too, so that's always good. So why don't we get right to all of that? Today's lesson question prize we have a free massage or facial spa from Hand and Stone. And the question that we will pose to you is, what kind of a discount is Casey going to get at the Piston Diner? <laughs> 215-263-WMMR. It was just a little while ago. It was around yeah. 10 o'clock that this uh, was uttered. What kind of discount is Casey going to get? At uh, I did with Kevin Sorbo because my wife... 263 wmmr Call right now. The trash business is a gold mine. 93.3 WMMR yeah. with Preston and Steve's Hollywood Trash. All right. We'll get the trash. What's going on this morning, Steve? Well, Charlemagne the God apologizing for scoffing at Monique's crusade against Netflix for not paying her what it paid her peers like Chris Rock and Amy Schumer. The New York radio personality granted Monique a 48-hour period during which she can refer to him as Charlemagne the Dick. Uh, oh my God. Taylor Swift telling her fans that she had a backup plan to announce her album if she did not win at the Grammys. Tay Tay revealed that she was ready to shoot Celine Dion in the face. Wow. Whoa. Hey. Wow. Well, that would have gotten press. And finally, 71-year-old mega producer Chuck Laurie's divorce from 31-year-old Instagram model Arielle Laurie has cost him $5 million. Still, Chuck says he ends up looking like a winner because people now know he's rich enough to have a hot Instagram model make him a laughing stock. <laughs> That's your hard All righty. Thank you, Steve. We'll see if we can get an answer to today's question. What kind of a discount is Casey going to get at Piston Diner 215 263 WMMR? And we will go to Alex and see if we can get a winner. Hi, Alex. Good morning. Yoo-hoo. Yeah. Alex, what kind of discount is Casey going to get? He's going to get the uh, the good-looking guy discount. Yes! <laughs> good-looking guy discount. All right. Thank you, Alex. Hang on. We are going to give you a free massage or facial from Hand & Stone Massage and Facial Spa. Love, pamper, repeat this Valentine's Day at your local Hand & Stone. And you can get a free massage or facial gift card with a spa package. Search the location near you to pick up the prefer a perfect gift and restrictions apply. You can see the spa for more details. Now, Preston and Steve's Music News on 93.3 WMMR. Yeah. All right, this is brought to you by Family and Company Jewelers. If you're ring shopping this Valentine's Day, visit Family and Company Jewelers on Route 70 in Marlton, New Jersey. Online at FamilyJewelers.com, South Jersey's diamond destination. I just have two things here, and that is it. Somebody burp? Might okay. have been me. All right. <laughs> I just heard a little quick burp. And it's soup day. It's soup bowl day. Of course you help it, man. I'm on cauldron right now. The Eagles are set to release a definitive career-spanning collection that combines their greatest hits with album tracks and classic live performances. Yeah, there's going to be a lot. How many... Beatles collections do you have? Uh, I've got a few. Yes, yeah, so I do have I. a few. So do I. And I have I have multiple collections of the movies of uh, Hard Day's Night and Help. Uh, but these are the Eagles. Oh, I should say the Beatles. Yeah, it sounds yeah. similar, so yeah. I totally get it. But uh, no, but the Eagles uh, have a lot. So, uh, But I would imagine they'll release multiple like the Beatles have. Uh, they're going. It's going to be available on April 12th in three formats. Digital, a three CD set, and a six LP vinyl set wow. to the limit is what it's called. And it contains 
51 songs from studio and live recordings released between 1972 and 20, uh, 2020, and all of the band's best-known tracks and number one songs are included in that. <laughs> What's it going for? Do they give a... You know what it doesn't say yeah. uh, in this particular uh, story, so I do not know, Steve. And I just have one more thing, and that's it. Uh, the world premiere stage adaptation of Prince's film and album Purple Rain is set for the spring of 2025 and an appropriate place it will be in Prince's hometown of Minneapolis. Interesting. Yeah. The musical will be staged at the State Theater in Minneapolis. And it's with, being called Dilly Bilotti? With Dilly Bilotti, <laughs> yes. And it is uh, <laughs> lyrics by, uh, music and lyrics by Prince and story by Brandon Jacobs Jenkins, uh, the two-time Pulitzer Prize finalist uh, for his plays Gloria and Everybody. Production dates cast. And details are going to be revealed later, so I have no idea who I, will be playing Prince. I wonder if they do it. Are they going to do it as a uh, period piece? Yeah, right. Like with because they would have to because right? those outfits and things right. that they wore were a, a big part, big of, it. part of that yeah. movie. So, all right, uh, and and the little puppet that he had. Yeah, you know, we will have that. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's it. Sorry, it was a very short um, it was music good, though. news for you. So we'll take a break. We'll come back and we'll wrap up the whole program. And we'll also give away our Word of the Week prize. So we hope that you're going to stay with us. That right around the corner. Stay put. Steve Show. Wicked. Yeah, it is 10.39 a.m. A Friday morning coming to the end of our No Sad Bro Day. Leading into a beautiful weekend. We have uh, actually nice weather today, 57 degrees and lots of sunshine. It's phenomenal out. Tomorrow, clouds, but 59 degrees, like 60, right on the edge of that. Yeah, by the way, the, the sun is a little bit early from what they were telling us before, so we got it right now. Yeah, loving it. So 60 degrees tomorrow. Uh, it's going to be freezing down at the ballpark, though, for the polar plunge. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, but um, actually, it's perfect weather for it. And uh, if you haven't yet signed up, Team WMMR, I'm the captain for it. Uh, we've got a lot of signups this week. We have a really cool contest with Steven Singer Jewelers which is awesome. We're going to give away an engagement ring, or they are, uh, if you sign up for Team WMMR. All that information about the pol Polar Plunge, which uh, is tomorrow morning at the ballpark, is up on PrestonSteve.com. But join Team MMR. You can end up winning an engagement ring, which is pretty damn amazing. You're getting so lucky with the weather, I man. Yes, you know, yeah. but <laughs> geez, when I did the Polar Plunge, I it was know. 21 degrees. <laughs> yeah. they were, were we there the same year together? No, I was at you. Had to cut, they had to cut through the ice for you. It was they a had little, to cut through the ice. It was a little bit warmer for you, but I think you were in the 30s. But it was a sheet of ice that they had to actually cut out for you. Yeah, they had they had to cut it cut out, and then they put um, I don't, what would the marine like uh, right, uh, right. rescuers right. out in the water in case anyone yeah. like drifted towards the ice. So they were wow. in their suits, standing in the water. Nick's going uh, during yeah. summertime. I'm <laughs> bringing sunblock tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Enjoy. That's, it's, it's a great cause, an awesome yeah. organization. The Special Olympics are so so cool, and there's going to be a lot of athletes down there as well. So it should be a lot of fun. I would like to. We do our thank yous here at the end of the program. I got to thank all the restaurants uh, yeah. for coming by and being a part of Soup Bowl. I threw the no. Here's the list. I would like to thank the following restaurants for being here: the Westmont. Diner, uh, the Kibitz Room, the Metropolitan Diner and Bar, Los Sarapas in uh, Chalfont, uh, Gas and Main uh, in Haddonfield, Catherine's Restaurant in Kennett Square, Gitanos of Mount Laurel, and our champion, the winner of this year's Super Bowl, the Piston Diner in Westville, New yeah, Jersey. Wow. So congratulations to uh, Ish and his crew. Their cream of potato leek soup is what won it all. We had, we had a whole variety. We had like at least, how many judges? At least 10 judges. Preston, I had four. So it's one, you know, one to eight. Is your, I had four eights. Four eights? Yeah, yeah. Wow. So we congratulate uh, everybody on their victories this morning. And uh, because we had a runners up and all that stuff, it was wonderful. And uh, we're very, very happy to have the return of the Super Bowl. And thank you to Adam Ferrara. Yeah. For being here this morning, and he is going to be at Helium Comedy Club, and that will be tonight. You will want to go see Adam. Uh, tickets available for the, let me see here, we got shows at 7.30 and 10, so make sure you go see him. He's just the best. He's so easy to talk to. He's a great guy. Just a just naturally, yeah. really funny and nice guy, so that was cool. Um, we have uh, Pierre Robert, who has made his way into the studio. He's, um, you know, kind of... Shuffle his way through all the various soups that are out in the hallways. There's a lot of soup. There's yeah, a lot, lot of soup. soup, yeah. And there's some vegetarian ones, too. Okay, I, I couldn't figure out which was which. 
I don't want to eat um, meat goulash soup. The uh, the <laughs> crew uh, that brought in the poblano soup set aside a very specific vegetarian, and it's strictly vegetarian soup for you. So oh, if, if you like spicy, it's damn good. And oh, you're going to love this. Vegetarian cool. one for you. Friggin very love, nice. Frick, freaking love it. Very and we'll nice. have to find out at the cream of potato leek soup. That was our winner, our champion, right. if that is indeed uh, <laughs> that should completely be. vegetarian. Yeah, he was stirring it with the dead kitten, though. Oh, so that, oh. yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, they, uh, it may have dairy products in it, but it should be uh, based. It should be, but you never know. Dude, you never know. The, the truffle five onion is out of this world. It was just absolutely my favorite. Wow. So maybe, uh, maybe that'll be okay for your uh, liking as well. So I am grateful for whatever I get. How about we do the letter of the day? We'd yes. be grateful. Here we go. Preston and Steve on ninety three three WMMR. Now the daily letter. All right, and the Preston and Steve show is brought to you today by the letter E, as in empty. All right, and we will now take caller number seven at two one five two six three WMMR, and we have our word of the week prize that we will give away. Caller seven, you need to know what the word of the week is in order to win. So give us a call. Right about now. Uh, and on your show today. On the program, we will have a block of Incubus. Those tickets just went on sale uh, 44 minutes ago at 10 a.m. for their visit. Brent Porsche has a pair to give away later. We'll do a workforce block. Uh, we got uh, Stevie Nicks in a workforce block. She's at the Hard Rock tomorrow. And a block of the Beatles. Today's the anniversary of their appearance. Uh, for the first time on the Ed Sullivan Show. Uh, yeah, 50 years, right? I know, isn't it wild? Yeah. Why weren't you talking about that in Music News yesterday? Yeah, I was talking about when they landed uh, <laughs> at the airport, right. yeah. And how many, um, but I think at some point yesterday you mentioned how many musicians saw them yeah. on Ed Sullivan and were inspired to pick up a guitar or that pursue like something. That was like the moment. Yeah. You know, that, that so many documentaries I've seen of people saying, that was it, that's when I realized... This, I want to do this. You know what I mean? I, you mentioned you were not um, old enough to see it. I was barely old enough to see it and immediately wanted a beetle wig. Um, but uh, it was, and I got one, and it was all polyethylene plastic, so it was, <laughs> I couldn't wear it outside the bathroom. But anyway, um, I, it, there was something that was so magical about their appearance there. Every, they looked different. They sounded different. They dressed different. Um, and it was a transformational moment, particularly coming off the pain the previous November of the Kennedy assassination yeah. for this country. And then all of a sudden entering into 1964 with some healing. Yeah, uh, it, was, it was a Sunday night. It yeah. was funny to look back and to hear from people how outrageous their appearance, not outrageous, but different their appearance seemed, that their hair seemed so long. Because to, uh, to me, it seemed short. It yeah, does. Growing up, but it was cut. outrageously long. Yeah. By today's standards, everyone, though, had a crew cut. Yeah. Every man had a crew cut, yeah. including me, much to my uh, dismay. I, I would right. give good money to see that. Uh, you wouldn't. Well, <laughs> anyway. So, anyway, we'll do a block of the Beatles. Excellent. Very much looking forward to that. All right, we're going to caller number seven, and it's Lisa. Hi there, Lisa. Good morning, guys. Uh, Lisa, if you have our word of the week, you win a prize. What is it, please? Juice. Great day in the morning. That's it. <laughs> Juice got it, Lisa. We're going to give you $500 from the big stuff. Yeah. So congratulations to you. 500 bucks. all right? All right. Thank you, guys. Put it to good use. Don't forget the Bagster is by far the most convenient and affordable way to help with your home cleanup. Go buy it at any home improvement store. Fill it and simply schedule your collection and it's gone. Clean it up with the Bagster. Dumpster in a bag. I would like to take this moment to thank our sponsors. The Preston and Steve Show is brought to you today by Duncan. And the Preston and Steve Show runs on Duncan. Also brought to you by... Trinity Rehab at locations all over. That's trinity-rehab.com. Next week on our program, there's a lot going on. Uh, Ryan Avery of Screen Crush. Avery. Interesting. Uh, Avery, yep. Avery, I'm sorry. Yep, yep. Uh, from uh, Screen Crush the, uh, on YouTube. Fantastic. We love talking to him. Uh, Ringling Brothers is going to be in town. So we're going to have some performers here in the studio to do some stuff. Uh, we will have on this show next week, Billy D. Williams. Whoa. <laughs> yeah. Isn't that cool? Whoa. Uh, so we'll chat with him. Uh, Kyle Dunningham. Uh, uh, he's Dunnigan. great. Dunnigan is going to yeah. be joining. Sorry about that. Uh, we will have new 
Pearl Jam oh. duet what? What? Great next week. Day in the Hoopla. And if you're nice, we'll play it twice <laughs> wow. on the show. Uh, and also, it's Galentine's Day next week, so we got a little gathering to do. So there's a bunch coming up. That's it. We're done. Rage on. Have yourself a wonderful weekend, and we will see you later, gang. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>